We are back. We are back yet again. Episode 41. It's the PVC podcast with your fellow co-hosts, Sam, Mike, and Laura. We're here. We're back yet again. This is a... Should I be say? I mean, this is probably a question for off pop, but we're here now. When I say the date, if I say the date, should I like Hmm. say today or should I say when it goes live? I don't know. I still don't Uh, know. Sometimes I say today. Sometimes I say when it goes live. You could say today. I agree with that. I think you should say today and then be just randomly be like, yeah, and it'll probably be uploaded on this day or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we're here Saturday pod. We're back. Uh, it feels like it's been a while. These days been dragging. Uh, that's a personal thing, I guess. It's all the same amount of days for all of us, but we're here. We're back. We're podding. I'm excited. I need this. I'm happy to see y'all. And how are y'all doing? How y'all feeling today? How y'all doing on this April Saturday, the night? Very good. Very good. Have yeah, a good I'm, week. I'm- Mm-hmm. And Mike went to see a cool ass movie, so I think we're mm-hmm. in a good mood. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Listen. All right. Listen. How are you doing, listen, Mike? Listen. listen. <laughs> Yo, last night was so lit. Oh my god! Like the movie was so good. All right. What? what but, hold on. Listen. No, I'm not gonna say anything. All but right. After the movie. Was lit. <laughs> <laughs> Very lit. All right. So we'll, you know, we'll we start went to, there. We we'll went start to the there. Bar, oh, you know. okay. Okay. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Okay. Oh, before we, gotta, we get there, we gotta, we gotta do the routine. Yeah. yeah. We got, we got, we got, we got things to get to first. Yeah. I need to know what y'all eat today. I'll start first. Oh, I'll start first. Laugh when I tell you what I ate today. So I woke up today, same old, you know, st- straight, straight hot, hot cup of coffee, straight black, a depresso. That's a, that's a <laughs> depression joke. No coffee, just depression is what I woke up with. But I finally got out of bed. I was like, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna make a chicken patty. You know, I'm gonna just, I'm, I'm gonna get the, get me some, some hash brown. I'll make a chicken patty. Woke up, finally had the strength to get out of bed. Brush my teeth, mouthwash, floss, those human things. And I was like, all right. Even even change my underwear before I started food. Sometimes I start the food and then change my underwear. But I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to freshen up now. Change, change the drawers. Then start the food. Open up the door. Fucking cats start screaming already. Oh, missed that part. That's why I woke up. Uh, fucking cat was screaming. But I was like, ah, whatever, I'll get out of bed. Open the door, she fucking starts running all over the place, knocking shit over. All right, dude. All right. Let me just make some food. I'll just make some food and I'll put some in my stomach and I'll be all right. Start making the food. What she does, start shitting immediately. Stinks up the whole fucking kitchen and the living room. I was like, all right, you know what? Hash brown's going back in the freezer. Sorry, chicken patty. You'll live another day. I fucking dipped. I was like, I'm out of here. I'm leaving. Gone. Peace. So I left. Ran a couple errands, picked up a gift for a friend, uh, put some money in the bank, got me some Five Guys. Got me Five Guy bacon cheeseburger with some Cajun fries and a free cup of water because I'm still a little cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I had to eat today. I was going to make chicken patty and smash brown, said, fuck it. I got to get out of here. Made a Five Guy burger instead. Oh, I didn't make one. Bought one. Ate yeah. it. It was delicious. It was good. And that's what I had to eat today. So what'd you what'd you have, Mike? You're about to you're about to go off. Actually, hold on. What did Laura have? And then you can go right into it. Yeah. So I woke up, I had nothing interesting to eat at my place. So I was like, I'm gonna go grab something. So I went out. The weather was good. It was kinda like the type of weather during the fall when like it's starting to be really humid. Yes, and cold, that was like, today too. Hoodie yeah. season. 
It was yeah. hoodie season. It yes. was good. So I went to a coffee place not too far from my place and I grabbed a hot chocolate and like a breakfast sandwich and a croissant. Ooh. And when I got out of there, I'm so pissed, man. I don't know how the fuck she handed me over the bag with the with the fucking sandwich in it or how the oh, fuck no. I grabbed it. But when oh, I got outside, no. Like I was holding it upside down so the sandwich fucking oh, slipped and just like oh, fell on the ground. Oh and I was no. like, man, I'm like, I was super bummed out. I'm like, I don't feel like fucking turning around and going to buy another one, so fuck it. And I went on a walk around the park. I sipped on my hot chocolate, and when I came back towards my place, I stopped at another coffee just to buy a muffin. <laughs> and I went back home oh, to go no. eat it. The yeah. sandwich. No, yeah. the sad sandwich. Somebody's yeah. going to see that sandwich and just cry. Yeah. Oh, oh man. damn. A cry. Yeah. That's a cry song. <laughs> yeah. That's a cry song on the sandwich. Fucking, like, on one of the like best avenues in Montreal, just like <laughs> fucking crashed and then opened up on the floor. And it's like, all right, mm-hmm. man, I guess that's my breakfast. Bye, dude. Oh, Buy 14 man. bucks. <laughs> Fuck. So, yeah, I ate my little muffin and then I ate some nuggets later today and I had some ice cream before the pod. So, I'm happy. It was a good food day apart from my accident this morning. <laughs> All right. Damn. Put, yeah. Pour one out for the croissant. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you have, Mike? Um,. When I woke up, I had leftover bacon cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. And then that's, and then, and then, have you not eaten since then, then? No, I have. So right oh, after okay. I finished that, um, Lily actually offered to make some breakfast. So oh. she made eggs, bacon. Waffles Ooh. with strawberries. Oh, so, yeah. it's good. Okay, yeah. really you had good. a meal. Yeah. That's a meal. Yeah, I had a meal because if I was <laughs> home, I wouldn't have that. You know, <laughs> so brunch, I had dude. a whole meal. It's awesome. Yeah, it's good. yeah. whole meal. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> and I, I was gonna say, if you didn't have anything between, you wake up the bacon cheeseburger, and then maybe in another hour or so. In come another bacon cheeseburger. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, but yeah, I guess on the visual side, you're probably like, what, what is this angle? What's Mike doing? He's at the homies right now. I like this angle, though. Mike. I like it. I like the view. I like the backdrop. It looks good. Looks good. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. You match um, really well with Sam and the color tones, I feel like yeah the you got the perp going yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i like it yeah. i like it <laughs> um speaking of fans that sonic movie i know that's what you're about to go on about so we can start right there let's get right to it because i know you got a lot the floor is let's yours. try to spoil it let's try to spoiler free this oh yeah. no I'm, there's no way i'm not gonna spoil anything don't myself and laura haven't seen it also just came yeah. out so yeah. to the, the viewers let's you know, try to spoiler free it, but so I know you just saw it uh, and then you got a lot. I knew this Sonic movie was going to be two. good. Yeah. Sonic 2 was so good, like from the moment it started, like Damn. it didn't even start off slow. And if you're a longtime Sonic fan, like, you know, like you're going to notice so many references. Oh, I'm man. telling you, yo, if you would have came with us, you would have been screaming with us. I'm sure I, I would have been. I can't spoil this. O- only thing I have to say is there's a there's a certain reference and it has something to do with Sonic being underwater. Oh, you're going to say to yourself, shit. you're going to no. say to yourself, no, you're going to you're, you're gonna say to yourself, my pants. you're going to say to yourself, hmm, it would be crazy if Sonic did that one thing. But I'm telling you, when it happens, <laughs> you're going, you, you, oh my God, you're going to it. Like, it, it was so good. Like, um, it was definitely a, a love letter to Sonic fans, for sure. So, yeah. Um, then, 
there's a surprise at the end of the movie. Like, okay. Yeah, I saw I saw things on Twitter. No spoilers, but yeah, I, me at the yeah. end of the mid credits, and it's just like going crazy. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, the movie was really good. And then after that, we went. We, for, we hung out around the theater for a bit, and then we went to a bar. Uh, and it was it was great. Oh, was um, this one of those was, crazy theaters with like the lounges and food and all that shit? Yeah, but it wasn't that crazy. We we got like a drink there, big popcorn, and called it a day. Okay. And then after that, we just went to a separate bar after that. But um, we had a couple of people with us, and um, I was high and drunk the, the entire night. <laughs> so, you know, I was I was drinking so much, and then every time we they rolled up i gotta get a few there hits. was a pic so, <laughs> it was a yeah. pic you tweeted yeah <laughs> you're just it was like i was like oh man yeah <laughs> i was so fucking high that night. yeah i got to that point and i was sore because on our way to the theater um me john and a friend took a shortcut and we were like jumping all over shit and it's like i feel old now because now my legs hurt yeah. Like I woke them up knees. feeling like them knees I fell will tell you steps. how old you are. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> like you woke up like you just got jumped. <laughs> and I was I remember that night I was really high, but I was sitting I was sitting like on the you know like the outside um area of like restaurants, a little outside thing. And I was mm-hmm. sitting on top of that thing where my legs crossed, well folded. And the moment I got up, I felt like I was gonna fall. <laughs> Like, I felt really fucking old. Like, like, you know, like the, your inner thigh, where that joint is, I felt like I was dying. Like, (laughs) like, it's crazy. Um, I'm definitely not 25 no more, but yeah, it was a fun ass night. It was a fun ass night. So it was good. So best video game movie you've seen? That oh my god, by a long shot. Like it's the best. Nothing can top it at this point, bro. Like and and Jim Carrey. Mm-hmm. Gotta keep it going. Legend. Legend. You gotta keep it legend. He gotta keep it going, bro. Like He's so good. Yeah, I remember. I, yeah, I remember at the end of the I first just, one when when yeah. they showed the mustache stuff with him, I was like, oh shit. Oh, I just watched shit. it this uh, before the pod, like two hours ago. I watched the first Sonic movie. I never watched it before. It was sick. Yeah, was really it's good. really it good. It was so funny. It's a good movie. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't take itself seriously. It's perfect. Like, I just yeah, it's like it. how it's exactly how like a Sonic movie should be. How like the games are. Well, once he started talking and stuff, right? Yeah. So like, yeah. It, it. I'm excited to see it. We're gonna see it. Uh, uh probably Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday. Okay. Go to a little, like I said before, hit a little matinee. Probably just be us. Get a big old bowl of bucket of popcorn. Yeah. And a little candy snacks and enjoy Hell the movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to it. Well, uh, the posters alone, man. The poster, the movie poster is the OG Sonic Two poster right there. Yeah. I've had this. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. So it it looks awesome, and I'm excited to hear. Here, Idris B. Knuckles, which is yeah, that's just dude. I mean, oh, Knuckles there is are black. A couple of right? times we already confirmed it, but Knuckles is black, honorary black man for sure. Yes, yes, yes. He was supposed yeah. to have a Jamaican accent too. Like, oh yeah, we I saw I saw some posts about that. Like his colors, yeah. the the Jamaican red, flag. Yeah, yeah, the the red, yellow, and green. Which I never even thought of that. And then you know the dreadlocks basically so like he's been black from inception but it's awesome for him to be on the big screen and confirming yet again he's black that's sick so i'm i'm excited to see it how was was this the first time you've been to the movies since pandemic Mm-mm. um i <laughs> Shit, I don't remember. Fuck. <laughs> I don't remember actually. I no, I could have sworn I went fairly recently. I don't remember what the fuck I you saw. See Spider-Man or anything? 
Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I saw Spider Man. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh okay. okay. But before that, the last movie I saw right before pandemic was Sonic One. Yeah, that was yeah same thing. So right before pandemic, I saw Sonic One, and then shit hit the fan, and then maybe a couple months ago we saw mm. Spider Man, and it was it was the same honestly both times. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was nobody in the theater. Empty, yeah. When we went to go see Sonic One, and then we went to go see Spider Man, and it was just us and maybe like three other people in the in the theater, which I'm cool with. Got the whole place to ourselves, basically. Um, yeah, yeah. When was the last time you went? You said uh, you saw Uncharted, right? Yeah, the last time I went was a couple of weeks ago. There was well, the movie came out at the beginning of February. And DNEG, the previous studio I worked for, they just like, uh, they try, companies usually try to do that if we worked on a project to like get a couple of tickets for a screening. And they try to, if a lot of people worked on it and if it was a big project, they'll try to reserve maybe the entire room for just us. So they paid us the ticket and it was even more than that. We got there. And they prepped us each like a little box, like a baby box of popcorn with like a small little oh. beverage and like a little bag oh, of candy. Oh, nice. And uh, yeah, so I snacked on that the whole movie. And it's really funny because like we had a signed seat, so I could have been sat next to anybody that I didn't know. And um, when I went there for the, uh, rather early and then somebody came in, a dude, and he had his mask on, so I didn't know who the fuck it was. And he said, aha, uh-huh, Laura. I'm like, uh, yes, do we know each other? And <laughs> then he's like, yeah, Yisid from like Mr. X. And that was two years ago. And I was like, no way, dude. Like, what were the odds? And we both work at that company now. And it's just kind of wild that he was assigned the same fucking like seat next to me. Yeah, right next to you. In like the whole fucking room. Yeah. And we had both worked on it. So it was kind of crazy. But um, yeah, that was the first time I went back. And it was cool. But yeah, you could see that. I don't know. People were still kind of iffy about going back yeah, to it's, yeah it's it's definitely different like that. Yeah. yeah it's different and like i know it may not seem like it but in in my young in days in in grade school high school i was a movie junkie as in movie theater i was like always there every weekend i'd be at the movies like playing little arcade games just hanging um so it's totally it's it's crazy i go to the movies now and i guess it's just old man it just feels like it's dead now i don't i don't know i mean there's streaming services and there's all these other type type of options and stuff now so i yeah feel like it's at least this movie theater that i've been going to since i was like fucking 12 it definitely feels dead <laughs> like definitely more than since since covid of course yeah but yeah it's just crazy how i feel theaters are just they exist and they're a thing that people go to sometimes but not i don't know if if movie theater as a whole will ever like recover i don't i don't know if they will i feel uh, like no i feel like at this point it'll always kind of be um like a choice you know do you want to stream this movie at home or do you want to go to the movies i feel like movie the movies is going to be a lot more of a social thing Mm -hmm. you know um which is what is for me now because otherwise i just watch the damn movie at home if i'm going to watch it by myself especially with technology now right i mean i go back 20 years not many people have fucking 50 40 60 inch tv screens that was like rare now it's like we got a i don't know 40 inch 32 inch or something for like 200 bucks and it's, it's awesome yep. it's like well i got a home theater right here just make some popcorn for three dollars and we're good hit the rgb lights and it's a whole it's a whole vibe so it's and that's so more so much more accessible now that i don't know those things are just becoming more and more accessible for more and more people to have that um i think it'll take some type of really crazy experiences that most people can't get at home now to make them 
interesting again. Like, I, I mean, even, you know, IMAX and 3D and that kind of stuff. I don't even really hear movies doing that much anymore. I mean, I, the last one I saw was, I think, Avatar. But, I mean, that was years ago, so. You mean the last Airbender? No, no, no. Like, Blue People <laughs> oh. Avatar. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Yeah, no. Um. Blue, Blue Man Group Avatar. Um, oh, okay. That movie was actually that, really good. Yeah, it was, that's, but that's what I'm saying, right? Like, that game, or that game it was, felt like a game. That movie was pushing boundaries, right? As far as the medium yeah. and experience yeah. and all that kind of stuff, right? It pushed so many boundaries. So, I, um, I mean, the Marvel movies are awesome. I love them. I've watched probably all of them at this point, except for fucking Morbius. <laughs> But like aside from that, I watch all we of them. We don't talk it's about cool. that. Yeah, um, it's cool, and I've, I've seen some of them in the theaters. Like I saw, I think all the Avengers ones in the theaters. Um, oh, you good? Yeah. <laughs> Did you feel something? A uh, knock nah, controller fell. Oh. Okay. Um. See, so yeah, I've seen like all of them in the theaters. Probably <laughs> Avengers. Oh shit, cracking open cracking open a cold one. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> um Cheers. but like like Avengers was cool, but now I got a TV that's so big or whatever, and I got friends who have even fucking bigger TVs, and it's like I'm cool. I you know, I don't I'm I don't need that experience. And honestly, um I mean I, I can We'll we'll get into it now. Uh, I recently got VR, and I'm telling you, if I can watch a movie in VR, which I can, I just load up the video. It's like I put this headset on, and I can have an 80 inch screen right here. The the speakers are right here in my ear. The surround sound and all that, and it's like I'm good. Um, see, I don't know, man. I, I think theaters always exist, but I feel like they'll become a lot more niche as time goes on with streaming services. And I wouldn't be surprised if like they die out eventually and then people just invite people over to stream movies when they come out. But yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, because one of my buddies, he's still like he has the um, I don't know what the movie theater is called, but it's like a pass. It basically like a subscription uh, to the movie theaters, right? Like you can that's go. The thing is called separate. Movie Pass. Actually. Yeah, but yeah, I think that's what it's called, yeah. Movie Pass. He has that, and because uh, he's super into Marvel movies, like he watches. I think he saw Spider Man like three or four times in the theaters. Um, so like that stuff exists, but I think yeah, it's it's one of those things that will just become a niche for those type of people who love the movies, right? You go back 10, 15 years, and a movie comes out, and it's like, all right, well, I just got to go to the theater to you see it. Go, unless, yeah. Yeah. Or I got to wait a year and a half. Now it's like they come out, and it's like, eh, I can stream it maybe, or I can wait like two months, and then it'll be on Netflix, or it'll be on Disney Plus, or Paramount, or whatever. So, yeah, I think they're just they're kind of becoming a bit more of a niche thing. But it's cool that the option's there. But, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point, you gotta you gotta travel unless you happen to live close to go to a movie theater, right? Because I feel like everybody's like, all right, the movie theater's like right down there. I could see them becoming a bit more few and far between. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was just saying earlier, I got I got VR this week, and I'm telling you, it's crazy. So like I've I've always known of VR, of course we uh, gamers, you know what VR is. And the only time I ever tried it was like 2014 or 2015 or something at PAX, and it was like a little bar thing, and they had like a little VR setup, and I was like put it on, I was like it was cool. It was just like this little super low polygon spaceship kind of. It was basically like a tech demo, basically, and I was like this is cool, I guess, but I mean whatever. This all right, I'm not really sold on this. And then that was, you know, like 2015. So, and I never tried it since then. Uh, Cause it's like, I'm not going to go to a con floor and put on this sweaty, greasy headset that people have been putting on all day and 
no, I'm not doing that. So I'm ne I've never tried it at like a convention or an expo or anything like that because it's like no. And uh, I have friends who have it, but they just haven't. I've never been to their place when they had it or when they came over, they didn't bring it with them or anything. So it was like, all right, cool. Like, I know it's a cool thing and people, you know, talk about it and stuff. But uh, this past weekend, I hung out with Kevin, who was on the pod earlier, Hyper Potions. Um, and he got his headset back in like November or something. And he was just talking about it. And I went over to just hang and he was showing it to me and everything. And I was like, holy shit. This stuff has came a long way, and this is incredible. Um, so we were at, well, we were playing some games. You know, I was playing Beat Saber and stuff. I like rhythm games, so like Beat Sabers always seem interesting and stuff to me. Uh, and it was cool. Beat Saber was awesome. Like it, like you see it, you see people play it, and you're like, oh, that's cool. Like I get the concept. You know, you're like slashing yeah. the cubes or whatever. It's uh, different being, when you play it yourself, right? Yeah, it's yeah. way different, um, and it's. And there's so much different music, right? So you could play Beat Saber to like your favorite song, most likely if it's somewhat popular, uh, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Um, but yeah, it's it's way different, and the tracking of it is crazy because it's like it's it sounds like I'm just fucking saying what's obvious, but it's my hands. Like my hands are moving with my hands. Like there's no like weird <laughs> lag or delay or anything. I always feel like. If you're in VR, like I move my hand and then like my hand moves, even in like video games, yeah. right? When there's, 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 de input there's input lag. delay. Input yeah. yeah. But like you're used to it. Even like Monster Hunter, right? Like I hit the button, I attack, but like it's not, the action isn't it's happening. It's like a few second while, difference. Yeah. Yeah. Like the action isn't happening while I'm on my way to pressing the button. It happens yeah. once I've done this motion and then press the button. But yeah. with the way the, the VR stuff is now, like I'm moving and it's moving. So like I'm hitting stuff to the music and my body's moving to the music and so are my hands in the game. And it it's like it's one of those things where people are like, yo, like VR was sick. And I was like, it sounds cool, man, but I just gotta try it. And I just never tried it. Um and I did, and it was awesome. I played some fucking mini golf in this whole big ass castle. And honestly, I don't think I ever want to play real life mini golf ever again. Cause I get to play <laughs> mini golf and do all the cool shit, but I don't gotta fucking walk everywhere and pick the ball up and hurt my back and all this stupid shit because I'm getting old. I could just fucking teleport right to the ball. I hit it. A little, you know, mini game, mini golf stuff happens. It was really cool. Um, well, VR is going to be like, really important in the future. Dude, I think in that's In the future, now. when we fuck everything up, there will be no nature to play golf in. So, you have VR. I mean, that's like now. Honestly, and this isn't I mean, me it's like getting there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? Like, we're already fucking shit up. Like, we're not at Ready Player One status, but like, nah, give it, yet. give it, yeah, give it a hundred, maybe two hundred. We'll probably be there. <laughs> Movies like, are being made bro. with VR now. Like in my yeah. industry, it's like getting really blown up. Like, yeah, and that's honestly, what's cool. Like, there's like use cases for it out because people are like, oh, well, you just play video games in it, but that's what. That's the thing that has blown me away with it the most. I mean, I was showing you guys those pictures earlier, but with Kevin, he was like taking me to clubs and people like design these clubs. Like, and it's like, people are just doing it just because they want to, but this is like architectural level shit. Like they're making these clubs and balconies and stairs and these full structures from like nothing in unity. And it's like insane. And then they make it, all these people show up like, all those that picture I showed you, all those characters there were real people. <laughs> like, yeah, there weren't any like just idle characters just to make it look like like you're playing GTA or something to make it look like it's lively. Like those were all real people sitting there hearing the music, talking to people, vibing, dancing. And it's like that's the thing that has blown me away the most is how like social it is, because I think a lot of people who don't know anything about VR, it's like it's just you. And you just teleport off to this world and it's just you doing stuff and that's it. And it's cool that you can see this whole world you're in, but it's just you and like whatever. But I've, I mean, the, the first night I hopped on when I got my own headset, we just went to this party, uh, this, this club and people were DJing and stuff. And I saw one of my buddies who I knew through just like music and DJing stuff. He was like in there and this wasn't like, like he didn't introduce me or anything. I just saw him. I was like, 
oh, yeah, I know you. What's up, man? And we were just like talking and it was like, it was like crazy. It was like going to an actual club and seeing somebody at the club that, you know, and it's like, oh shit, I didn't know you were going to be here. And it's, it was really cool. And, uh, I was that's on crazy. yesterday too. Yeah. And we were like going to different clubs and stuff. And then that same thing happened to, to me, like w- me and Kevin, we went to like three or four different clubs. And by like the third one, somebody else who was also at that club walked up to me and Kevin was like, were you just at this place earlier today? And we were like, yeah, we were just like vibing. I was like, I thought I saw you. We, you kind of stand out. You two were, you two were together. And I was like, it was crazy. It was like, yeah, man. It's like, awesome. All right. Have a good one. It was like actually club hopping, like bar hopping in college days. It was like that, except I was just right here in this room and people were like, Oh shit. What's up, dude. It was, it was amazing. It's like, it's, it's a kind of experience that I had no idea that it was going to be like, cause I've always just thought of VR with games. And when I'm doing something super tactile, it's like, like, it's like, Oh, what if monster hunter was in VR? Like I, I have no interest in that. I have zero nah, you interest know what? in no, playing listen. Monster Hunter VR. Listen, fuck all that shit. Let's talk about a night out with the boys. We get Dude, drunk as fuck. And we in v- VR chat in a bar. Just that's getting literally, fucked up. I'm telling like, you, that is what it's like. Like, we were yeah. out. And we were in a bar. And there was a guy. <laughs> me and Kevin were talking about something. We, we brought up, like, I mentioned, like, Chick-fil-A or something. I was like, yeah, I had Chick-fil-A earlier today. And somebody who was like over was like, he like walked over, was like, Did you just say Chick-fil-A? And I was like, Yeah, we were just talking about it. He was like, you know what? I'm getting Chick-fil-A tomorrow now. You put the pl- you put the seat in my head. <laughs> and it was just like a random person just like standing there. It was like, that's it's insane. It's really cool. There were other people who was like, yo, I'm turning up. I got some drinks. And you could see like, because you, you obviously you have a headset on, you have like the the you know, the controllers, but you can see their hands kind of like doing this because like they're like yeah yeah because they're because they're opening a can or like a bottle or something and then they like put their head back it's like yo turn up yo, <laughs> that's, was, yo that's crazy I yeah gotta get, yo, i gotta get a headset bro like, it's cool man and like it when i went to kevin's and he showed it to me this like we went to one we only went to like one club when i was at his place because he was just showing me i was on his stuff or whatever but between that and like playing the games and all that stuff i was like yeah i'm sold like i went there on monday and I literally bought it on Tuesday <laughs> and it yeah, got to I my saw house. That. Yeah. yeah, it got to my house quick. on Wednesday. I like set it up and I got like the rest of the accessories on Thursday. And then we were in the club that day. And no that's when way. I was like hanging out and I saw my buddy who I like we hadn't talked in years. But I used to when I DJ and stuff, he was just there. And I was like, oh, shit. And then we were talking and everything. And everybody I talked to was just so cool and open and welcoming and everything. Because I mean. I don't know if I've talked about that here before, but I don't know. It's like social anxiety is like a thing, right? So when you're just around a lot of a peop a lot of people, it could just be like too much. But the way it is, like you're like, oh man, this is crazy. It's like real, except it's also technology. So if the voices, if too many people talking is too much, you could literally just turn the voices down. <laughs> like you could be like, True. these voices are yeah. too much. I could just turn it down. I want to be here, but I don't want to hear all this. Or like. If the if the music is too much, you could just turn the music down and just talk to people. If somebody's like avatar is too much or you don't like the way it looks or whatever, you could just like turn it off. Like all the shit Bro. that when you're in real life and you're Bro. like, yo, I don't like this. You <laughs> can just do that. <laughs> you can just do that. VR MMO. Yeah, there's one that exists apparently. I haven't tried it, but there is one. They're like a VR MMO. And Kevin was telling me, he was like, um, People are like crafting and stuff, right? So they'll have like a workbench and they're crafting and making stuff. And you can just like walk over and see what they're making because they're using their hands to just yeah. craft and make shit. And you can just like look at it and be like, oh, I want to buy that because you're making it and like just do the transaction and all that kind of stuff like right there. It's really cool. Um, Yo, oh, wait. VR porn, bro. That's VR definitely porn. Listen, that's listen. Let me. No, I gotta. No, nah, look. I was not expecting no, that. I can't. I no. Look, I can't. Bring I was up, waiting for it. I was like, I can't it's bring gotta, up VR without VR soon. porn. Like, listen, <laughs> listen. There's a difference between choking the chicken. You know, there's a difference between just getting, you know, getting your phone. You know, have a nice little session between getting the the whole set. 
and you got the experience. Look, one day, one day, there's going to be a lot of men. We ain't going to need the real thing no more. You know, you know, I don't want to do with emotions. I just want, I just want to feel it. You know, mm -hmm. I just want to feel that shit. So you get VR, you get yourself and a flashlight. <laughs> Look at you! Look at I see you. Get yourself a flashlight, VR headset. You got the full experience. You can fin. You finish. Don't gotta talk to her ever again. <laughs> and you don't even gotta feel bad. You're it's awful, over. Mike. <laughs> like it's over. That's it. Like. Oh. Man. It's great, man. It's great. Mm -hmm. The future looks bright. You know, so I'm gonna. I say. mean, I that I was I was pretty sure Mike was gonna get there. I didn't have to go there. I was like, Mike's gonna get there. Um, <laughs> I haven't delved into that. I'll say yet because my curiosity. I'm gonna have to check it out at some point. I'll make sure to update when I get there. But I haven't delved into that yet. I'm still just <laughs> getting accustomed. Um, yeah. But yeah. Thank you for keeping I mean, us in the loop. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean it's it's really cool and this is uh they're not i wish i was getting paid or at least i got a free one or whatever they're not paying me but the what i got the oculus quest 2 and it's 300 bucks and it's you just you got the full vr experience like i mean there's I like full question, body though. tracking and all that stuff yeah i have a, um so if i wanted to play like let's say skyrim on vr mm -hmm. But I didn't want it to be like nauseating. Could I just literally project the screen yeah. on so the, you, the headset and just yeah? Like, so like I can I can put the headset on and like there's like a desktop mode, so it just shows my computer screen. Oh, so you like can just play ass. like that with your controller, right? Yeah, and I can just sit here and have my controller in my hand, and it's like I'm playing on a big ass fucking a wall size screen. So like you could just be in VR and not do like VR stuff, just have a big ass screen, and you know the sound is like right here and you know, everything. Listen, Sam, you can get a headset, ain't you? We can go clubbing, man. I, we can go, I have we to can get go clubbing. There, there's we can go many clubbing. reasons I gotta go clubbing. You know, I gotta try VR porn, right? <laughs> I gotta, I gotta play Cyberpunk on the VR headset. Does that like, game have like a VR mode or you just you just mean the big it, screen? No, it doesn't. It, I think it'll be a big screen. Oh, but okay. because the sound is so immersive, you put yeah. the headphones on. Yeah, dude. Like dude, that's a whole other thing, man. That's like, a when whole I was saying, mood. We yeah. went to the club and it's like an actual club, man. Like there's speakers and the sounds yeah. coming from the speakers. So if I'm standing like right here next to the speaker and i turn my head it's just right here yeah and it's going around and everything it's it's really crazy man it's cool it's cool as hell and right. like and it's one of those things where people would tell me that i'm like all right cool but like i just gotta i just gotta try it but some come over pop on the headset get your experience try it out see what it's like man because it's awesome and for 300 bucks that's a fucking series or a fucking series one series s Series S, yeah, I have that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's a Series S, and it's and it, you, that's the thing that's cool with this one too is it works. It you can do just the headset too, like you can just use uh, the headset and just do stuff in it. Like it has its own thing. Like yeah, you don't, basically you can like link a, it. an immersive screen, basically. Yeah, but like I mean, like your, you don't you, you don't need a computer to use it. Uh, like oh, you can use it. Okay. You can use it without a computer if you want. You get obviously access to more stuff and mods and custom shit yeah. and all that if you do use your computer. But you can just use it without and just do whatever's in there. I mean, there's a whole Oculus store of games and all that kind of shit too. Um, but yeah, it's it's cool. Um, and man, for <laughs> the disassociating I've been needing recently. Yeah. It it is Perfect. hitting the spot on that. <laughs> it has been hitting okay. the spot on that. Um, but I, you mentioned I, I put in the docket. I was like, VR is incredible, and Laura was like, VR makes me sick. <laughs> yeah, man. I tr well, granted, I tried it like a while ago, but I, f I played it at my friend's house, but it was I can't remember which one I played because it was on Sony, the PlayStation. Mm -hmm. And I played, well, granted, I probably didn't play the best game ever, but I played a, a fucking 
not Forza. What's the on Sony Gran Turismo or whatever? Gran Turismo. Yeah. Fucking... yeah, Gran Turismo. Man, that shit made me dizzy. I fucking oh, hated see that. now like... that's the thing, and like that's because I that's the thing that's very common, and I, it's different for everybody, right? Everybody's like um, sense of equilibrium is different, of course, yeah. but I think there's certain things that definitely accelerate that, and I think driving a car at fucking 90 miles an hour especially your first time in vr is gonna i think yeah. make most people fucking sick um yeah. so like awful. that's I what like, All right, no yeah thanks. that's a terrible first experience so yeah. i think i mean i'm over here trying to get everybody to have vr so i can hang with everybody in fucking vr but mm-hmm. I, I get it from my side where it's like all right cool whatever that's still 300 bucks maybe i like need to try it first um if yeah. you do come across an opportunity to try VR, and especially in what you do for work, I know that's a thing. Uh, a lot of designers yeah. use VR to get like a sense of scope and look at environments and all that kind of stuff. And it's re- it's it's Dude, really there's cool. There's people in my industry now, like because there's a lot of uh, 3D sculpting in VFX. There's a lot of people now that. 3D sculpt in VR, like at work, and they're just like they literally what the take, fuck? they have their pen like this, and they just yeah. like fucking freehand like this, and they sculpt, but like yep. they're in, they have their fucking headset and shit. And yeah, they just, Yo! yeah. Yeah, there's a in VR oh chat. There's God. this like you get like a default room, and there's this there's like a pen and like a marker or whatever, and you can and, and like a color wheel. So you like pick up the color wheel with one hand. And you pick up uh, like the pen or marker or whatever in your other hand, and you're drawing in 3D space. So like, if what I do this fuck? to that, it's a I just drew a line yeah. that's here, and I can walk around and see the line and all yeah. that stuff. And it's like it's cool. But it's it really goes cool. even more wild than that because like I had a friend of a friend. She posted it on Twitter and it blew up. Um, she was in the world in vr she was in the world of fallout i think and she found mm-hmm. a spot like a window spot where with a nice view and in that world she was painting in photoshop she had it projected on the screen within the world and she was just like painting doing her own painting while looking, looking at, at a fallout it. view yeah that's as if that's she was awesome there. yeah yeah it's it's that really cool sick. man <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean when that we're done here sick. i'll show you guys i'll put the i'll put it on and like screen share it so you guys can see it it's it's cool as hell yeah. but like yeah if you're interested in it if it seems any slightly interesting or you're like holy shit that sounds cool like the the quest 2 i i don't know man i i was talking to somebody again in vr chat and i was like there's like a new one coming out in a couple months but just like with any technology like if you wait there's just going to be something else new that's going to come out and something else that's new that's going to come out and that's that's also why i got the headset on the spot because coming from fucking pc tech if you want a graphics card fucking good luck i was just yeah. like i want this i could just buy it right now so i'm gonna just buy it so i was like fuck it i'm gonna just get it and it was like no upsell or whatever it's just straight from fucking amazon so like i could return it if i wanted to um so i just like picked it up i got like i got like a really long cable so i could like charge it and still use it and i got like some grips and it was like 350 once i got everything and it it's cool Damn. as hell um and easily worth it's also keeping me distracted from the fact that i don't have my steam deck yet so that's also good <laughs> um but yeah it's it's really cool uh i'll show you guys some some of it here i haven't streamed with it yet before we move on oh what's up i f- i found it by the way i posted it in topics and shit. oh oh okay if you want to show it on screen it's fucking crazy yeah let me turn that off that's what that's my yeah, bad. <laughs> no, no, I usually had streamer mode on, but I didn't for whatever reason. I don't know. Look have you thing. um have you um Mike? Mike. That's crazy. Mike, what are you saying? I'm looking at the video. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm holding it. Yo, Yo that's, that's insane. That's crazy. Yeah, Yo. and that's the thing, right? You look at this picture and you're like, what the fuck? This is like a a a one by one square, like this probably doesn't look all that good. Like, no picture of VR captures mm. what VR feels like. It's just you can't 
Because the thing yeah. that's crazy is, to me, the craziest thing is looking up. Because, like, looking down is like, okay, this, even if you're way in the air, it's like, I know my feet are here. So, like, yeah, I know it's yeah. like, it's still immersive, but you, there's like a physical barrier that you can feel. But yeah. when you look up and there's nothing there, it's like, I'm, that's, I'm looking up and it's right there. Like, I, I mean, I can't touch it because it's way up there. So it just looks like I'm in that place, like looking around. It's it's really cool. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. She's like drawing that. Yeah, and, and that's what you can like get angles and stuff. Because the yeah. first time you wear it, you're just like, OK, cool. I'm just looking straight. And then the more you use it, the more you kind of get immersed. And you're like, oh, I wonder what's around that corner. And you can just look around the corner. Because <laughs> usually, yeah, like, yo. especially in environments when you're in a game, especially something like this, like Fallout, right? You, it, it's, If you're looking out a window, like, you can't look around, like, you can't peek your head out around the window unless the game programmed you to be able to do that with, like, a over-the-shoulder kind of mechanic or something. But you yeah. could just look. <laughs> you could just see it. Yeah, that's insane. That's so yeah. cool. My bad is yeah, it's, not a it's, Fallout, it's Half-Life. <laughs> yeah, oh. I was gonna ask because I'm like, this is this ain't no, this ain't Fallout. Yeah, this gotta I was be... like, I know nothing it, about video games. See, it looks all the same to me. I wouldn't have even known unless yeah. you said that. <laughs> nah, it looks Fallout like is like literally shit broken. Yeah, that's Fallout. <laughs> Fallout is post post apocalyptic, but there's no like, it's not futuristic. It's just everything is oh. just fucked. Mm. Yeah, yeah, see it all. Yeah, I'm with you, Laura. It all. I, I would have not it looks known. Looks the same. <laughs> yeah, I would not have known. <laughs> but yeah, that looks cool. Um, yeah. Oh, and then that's the picture. That's so sick. Oh, that's really shit. cool. Yeah, that that's amazing. Um, but yeah, like again, I'll I'll show you guys. But Mike, if if you if you think it sounds that cool, man, I think you'll like it. Uh, like it's it's crazy dude just i need to just, i need to try that with with a game like cyberpunk because it's immersive so imagine yeah. with vr like yeah that's wild i'm gonna look yeah, up and throw cool. up yeah. like because all the tall yeah. buildings dude, like, that's the thing that, that's real though like we were i showed you guys that picture that it looked like we were underwater that was like a club yeah. and the visualizer yeah. was because usually it's like on a screen and then they have the visualizer. Yeah. But in this club, the visualizer was the club. So you were like in the oh. visualizer. And some of them like made your vision go all crazy and shit. And I was That's with Kevin. Wild. And for me, like, I think my my um, my tolerance for motion sickness is is pretty high. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't really bother me too much. But there was one of them where like you were you were like in this space and there were like 3d things coming at you and your vision was all crazy and he was like yeah i gotta sit down like i'm getting the fucking motion sickness burps right now <laughs> but yeah it's it's cool but that's the thing is like all right this is too much you just fucking you just take it off you just leave it's like i'm out like there's so many times in life where i'm like on a fucking plane and i'm like all right this don't feel good but i got nowhere to fucking go <laughs> I gotta just dude, deal with this fucking any, plate. Even any fucking social situation, social battery yeah, dude. drain. That drain. That's the Fuck thing. It. Bye. It's All like right, it's enough. so cool. Bye. I'm at the bar. I'm I'm home already. Yeah, <laughs> you know? like you're done. And it's like that's like the thing. It's like I can go to I can go out, go to the bar, go to the club, drink, and then I don't have to drive anywhere. I could pass out right here on the floor, and I'm not inconveniencing anybody else's night because that's what happens, right? It's always a person who goes out, drinks way too fucking much, and now everybody else's night's fucking ruined because you got to take care of them. You got to make okay. sure they get home. All right. Can we not? I know. We, can we not? Because, you know, that was that was me at one point not too long ago. Like, I ruined the whole see, goddamn night. All right? See, you won't have to like, do that anymore. You could just be home, turn up at the club and be like, yo, all right, I'm lit. And then just fucking pass out and you're good. Uh, that actually happened yesterday. I, I wasn't drinking, but it was like 4 a.m. and I was just chilling. And uh, I was, we were in a club and I was just sitting down. And I just fucking dozed off. I was like, oh shit. All right. I think I got to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. And then like, I, I like logged off, but I was just, I was already on the couch reclining and chilling. So I just fucking napped on the couch for another two hours before I went to bed. It's like, it's crazy. Dang. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, if if you 
And for those listening, if you know somebody who has VR and you're interested, I always I highly recommend trying it because, like I said, everybody's motion sickness tolerance is different. Um, Because like I was Heather's is like super low. I was showing it to her. And um, like I said, I pulled up. I was in I was (laughs) I pulled up like a YouTube video because they have like 360 YouTube videos. And I was like, it was probably a bad one for somebody who hasn't used VR often and has glasses too, because I feel like that's probably Oof, maybe yeah. helps with like the scale. But I was like fucking 600 feet in the air, like flying over like Swiss mountains. And I was like, here, check this out. And she was like, oh God, I gotta go. She was like, no. she had to like sit down. <laughs> she was like, this is too much. I'm like, she had like the motion sickness burps. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, that probably was not a good yeah, <laughs> introduction terrible. on it. Uh, Thanks, but ne- next time, <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, next time I'll show her like VR chat and show her like the clubs and stuff. Cause like, you know, that's just a room and you're just standing around other people. And uh, it's, it's just really cool. It's just a really cool social aspect. There's actually, um, I'll link it in the, in the description. There's like a little like PBS video talking about uh, VR chat and the club scene and all that stuff. And it's really cool. Cause I watched that video on, I don't know, maybe, I guess, Thursday. And then on Friday, n- not, it wasn't planned, but I ended up at the same place that was in that video that they were mm. talking about. Like the oh, same shit. club place. Uh, and I was like, this is crazy. The, the place I was, uh, I was talking about earlier. So it's like, a, it's like an office building and you like, you go down the elevator, you go outside, you go across the street, you go downstairs. It's like this whole environment they made. Um, and normally it, it, you're usually you'll probably get lost unless you know what's going on. Um, but literally because I watched that video the day before, I was like, oh shit, it's this place. So I like was I knew exactly how to get to where the club was. But it's like a whole office building, and then you like go across the street to this like music store and you go downstairs and it's like this bunker that's like a small ass, like little like closet. Not a closet, but like super small, like dance floor club, like in in the in a hole like hole in the wall kind of place uh it's really cool and you know playing music people dancing all that kind of stuff um and like the the club the club um dance floor is like really small and i guess when they make the space they can kind of tune how the audio works so that it's tuned like when you're on the dance floor that you have to be like really close to other people to hear them talking so it's just basically just the music uh but if you step right outside it's you can hear like people normally and since it's this oh. whole structure like you go in the the dance floor and you're just hearing music basically unless you're like super close like like literally like this close to talk to somebody else and then you step outside and everything's fine but they have all these other rooms like there was like this like abandoned computer room and people were in there <laughs> and i walked in there and they're like yo what's up we're not doing drugs in here we're just eating some taco bell <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> and then like around the corner there was this like ba- like like dilapidated like bathroom and there was like 10 12 people in there just fucking just hanging out just there was this <laughs> huge ass like teddy bear and some fucking anime girl some dude like dripped out with like six sneakers and stuff just like yo what's up guys just chilling in like a random bathroom just talking and stuff it was it was really cool there was a thomas the tank face just a naked blue body and he had a thomas the tank train as a dick and i was what? like this is crazy <laughs> it was just like he had another thomas the train thomas the tank train right where his dick would be and i was like this is crazy this is wild this is an experience like no sounds other. like the type of <laughs> shit that mike needs to get <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, think- I'm actually gonna get it and make some content with that shit yeah, yeah, I think you would actually have a blast with it. And yep. uh yeah. If you do, let me know. Cause there's like a there's like a little <laughs> reference link. So we get a little free money to, to get oh, some okay. stuff. Okay. So yeah, on both oh, sides. Shit. We gotta you gotta get one too, Lord. We gotta have a VR PVC pod. Oh, oh man. my god. Wait a minute. Whoa. That would be sick. We could we could man. make the room and VR <laughs> PVC pod. All three of us in the same room. Pod. That would be crazy. That'd be sick. Dude. That would be really Bro, crazy. If I could get my my character model from World ripped out for VR yeah. chat Yo, and then get and a voice what, changer. Mike, do you remember? We have we have a 3D artist right there. 
He's right there. Whoa. Laura. I can't get <laughs> She's right there. <laughs> Listen. Bye. I only yeah, have connections. Like... I don't have resources. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But like all right. that's what's crazy. I know. <laughs> Those places like I like the environment one, like that place you made when you did that Elden Ring piece. Like you could yeah. I mean, I don't know the full details of it, but I'm sure you understand that shit way more than I do. And understanding how you could probably export that, import it into something else, and then we could just be there. Like we could just walk yeah. around in that environment that you made, which is yep. insane. Yeah, mm -hmm. that'd be. You <laughs> we gotta, can do a we podcast gotta... in my fucking Elden Ring fan arts. Let's go. Yes, <laughs> we literally could. That would be so crazy. Yeah, that'd like be nuts. <laughs> yeah, and we could be looking like fucking whoever. You can look like fucking Melina or whatever her name is. <laughs> Melina <look> fucker. Like... <laughs> <laughs> fucker. Fucker. Yeah, it's crazy. But yes, I you get can the look gist. like whoever. Yeah. It's uh it's Amazing. really cool. It's really cool. Um yeah, I'm gonna probably hop on when we're done here. But yeah, that was that's been my week, basically, is I have been gone. Like yesterday. Uh, Heather was going to bed and she was like, all right, good night. And I was like, yeah, I'm about to leave. She was like, where are you going? I'm fucking leaving this earth. I'm going to fucking <laughs> VR chat. <laughs> I'm going to the club. I'm out of here. <laughs> uh, and then I was on there until like four o'clock. Um, yeah, it's it's awesome. It's really cool. And like I said, if, if any of you folks listening have a friend or something who has VR and you're like, what is this shit all about? Definitely try it out. Or if you're like Mike and you're like, fuck, it, I'm just going to get one. Get get it off Amazon if it works. Awesome. If not, just fucking return that shit. Listen, uh, I'm gonna yeah, be a VR it's... chat menace. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> in fact, this wait doesn't John have up? one? That be gonna say that. I oh might try that god. shit tonight. Uh, yeah. Like, oh my god. Yeah, we got her. Let's try that tonight. All right, let's get through these topics. Let's wrap this pod up. <laughs> 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 Only one missing here is Laura. You gotta. It's gonna happen. It's, we got it. Maybe, you got a new job. Maybe. You making maybe. more money. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You got. Whoa, you got. Whoa, whoa. She got the. You got the Skrilla to do it. She got the exposable, disposable income. This is. Oh, it's shit. nothing. Oh shit. Oh, there gotta, it is. Ah, uh, there we this go. The there. He got the Oculus right here. See. Oh shit. There it is. Oh, that shit white. That's okay. The, the wireless one. Yeah, this, nice. this is the quest two. Oh. It's sick, man. It's cool. It's cool. And the wire, the wire, the wire. Mike is like, I'm gonna do that VR port tonight. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, nah, not here. No, nah, chill. Out. Nah, I gotta be home for that. Not here. I gotta be home. <laughs> got me home for that. Nah, I gotta be home for that. You gotta nah, chill out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah yeah it's it's cool though i don't know i'm i've been i've been thinking about streaming it but it's like it's especially with going to the clubs and stuff it's such an immersive experience that it's like i kind of yeah, like, like want to just like keep it not keep it to yeah. me as in i don't want other people to experience it but as far as like yeah. no but you want to keep that for your off time yeah yeah um, I don't want it to be like a content thing, but I may fuck around and like find some other weird, weird worlds. Like I said, I found there was one that was like Kimura, like the gathering hub from Rise and like walk around there and stuff like that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's it's cool, man. And uh, I'm going to be fucking with that for a while between between this headset when I'm home and then Steam Deck whenever I got to leave. Psh, the disassociation is at an all time Hi, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gone. Um, but yeah, so it's cool. It's cool. And uh I'm a I'm gonna show you guys some stuff when we finish here. But uh yeah, what do we got? We got um do you know what? Speaking of hunts, actually no. Well, actually it kind of works speaking of hunts. You were talking about uh Laura, you put uh burnout out on games. So would you oh would you have God. on that? You burned yeah. out? Elden Ring, man. Well, the thing is, oh. is I was on um, 
I'm at a point where I realize I watch more people play Elden Ring on Twitch than I'm actually playing the game myself. Because, um, I don't know. I mean, I know I'm going to get back to the game and finish it. But I think it's one of these games where um, I'm starting to get to a point after 100 hours where I'm ready for the game to be finished. But the game isn't. There's like That's... still a shit lot to go through. And I'm just like not in the mood for it. So I just told myself yep. like it's fine. I'm just going to put it down and come back to it later. Um... But yeah, and it, it's not necessarily the game's fault, and maybe just me that like just went into it way too fucking hard, way too fucking fast, like probably a whole lot of other people. Because uh, from gathering people's feedback over the game so far, people seem to say that like the enjoyment started and the excitement super fucking hard and high, and then towards the end it really fucking like dropped and stuff. And I think it's because people forced themselves to play past the point where they were like okay i'm ready for this game to be done yeah where they just Listen, you know like what? sprinted y'all just built different all right y'all <laughs> built different because i don't ever want a game to end bro that's like, how you no see that's the thing though that's how you feel until you hit that point right I when you're like playing point. something bro i that's played you, i played several mmos and I get anxiety about it shutting down. I don't want it to end. I want yeah, it to that's, stay. That's how you feel until you hit a game where you don't. Look who's playing PSO. That's different. All how right? is it different? <laughs> because I'm just, I just don't want to play the game at all. And that's like, exactly the point. That's yeah, you, but you, you no, don't want to play no, it. No, listen. No, if, listen, if I'm already enjoying something a lot, I don't want it to end. You see what happened with Rise? We were playing the fuck out of that. Right, so excited different. for it. <laughs> All right, that's different. And then no, we that's were like, different. Oh, we're done. Why is that's, it different? That's yeah, different. what's different? Because there's a difference between. All right, y'all, y'all right? <laughs> but listen, it's a little different because <laughs> it's a little different because Rise. Yeah, I got burnt out on Rise, but I know I'm gonna come exactly. back. Exactly. No, but, but I know I'm gonna come back though. It's like that doesn't right, change the burnout. Though. No, 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 no. Burnout is like burnout is like an X that you always go back to. You know? No. There's certain games. No, no. What? <laughs> There's certain games, right? <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? There's There's garbage no, ass analogy, bro. <laughs> no, it's not a garbage <laughs> analogy. Just <laughs> fucking listen. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> You're not this is toxic You're ass not... analogy, Mike. What is toxic this? Toxic analogy. No, you gotta let me finish. <laughs> like, so it's like let, let rise. Rise is like you you like this girl a lot, but you know that she could be better, but she just not fitting the, the description to a T. But yeah, you, then you, you enjoy her. Yeah, you leave and you fucking come back. No. Like, no, listen. <laughs> Because we know an update <laughs> is coming for Rise, so we have that hope. Well, but that's that... that's different. No, no, that's... Not, no, no. That's like Cause that's content. That's new content. I'm talking about the game we got right now. The game we have. That's I it. still come I'm... back to Rise though. Yeah, but you come for back like for three hunts, hunts and, and then you're stop. like, this is trash. That's because you, you burned out. The two hunts and it's trash. It's literally, I'm gonna come to your house tonight. We gonna do some shit. And I'm gonna peace out for two months. <laughs> it's the same shit. That means you burnt this... out because you don't want to yes. stay there anymore. Yes. Yeah. So you're that's what we're saying. That's called burning yeah. out, Mike. <laughs> that's that's that means you burnt out. That's what we're saying. And it happens. Cause and the thing is it never happens until it does, right? I mean, even fucking yeah. world, man. Like like especially you mike you know how much i fucking played streamed world iceborne insane i fucking four thousand on pc and probably like another two thousand on console like i played the fuck out of that game but by the time fatalis came around i was like burnt out man and i love the game you know three months later i did a whole other save i went through whole base game with ice mod and all that stuff but the fact of the matter is, by the time that Fatal shit came around, I was burned out. I beat it, made the armor, was like, I'm done. You know, that's it. it's crazy because for me, 
But after Fatalis came out, I was like, I was playing a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. Um, I think World is just really easy to come back to. Just, there's something about World. I can't really explain it. It's, it's such just, an easy did, game to come back to. It did like, everything, as far as Monster Hunter goes, it just did everything current enough with enough of the old school to feel comfortable. Like, yeah, it feels like a game from now, but you still can adjust to all the old school stuff that's not stupid. As far as, like, basically the combat, right? Like, the combat loop. Because it's more than just the combat, right? We've we've already been through this with Rise a million times, right? The combat in Rise is amazing, but the loop is not there, right? There's no loop. Yeah, there's the loop. The loop in World is, was you, just You perfect. know what's... What's really annoying is, you know that that meme that's been going around, the little your uh, favorite game grid. meme, but yeah. different, or just the game grid, yeah, not in just general, Monster, yeah, but yeah. So I put Rise as favorite combat, and someone was like, "You put Rise as favorite combat? Oh, Why? The combat's really good. <laughs> like the fuck? Like the combat's really good. That's like Switch the best thing about fun. it." Switch skills yeah. are fun. Like, yeah. it's really like fun it's... to, in 14 weapons, the fact that I can personalize my combat style with skills, it's just yeah. sick. That was yeah, the whole the point combat of it in too. Rise is like the best thing about it. Probably the best in the series for how much you can do with it. But again, like, it gets the rap it gets. I mean, the release date was part of it too, but I think mostly is the loop, right? Like the loop in World and Iceborne was just unfucking matched. And honestly, for me, like any game, like not even just Monster Hunter, just any long term game, I have not played for a any game, game that's not even for a like game that. that's not even like technically a live service game. It, yeah, it, it was the loop was, was insane, right? Between yeah. obviously the story, events being like super meaningful, like you know meta changing events to yeah. investigations, to more updates of just DLC, again, like actual changes and gear and mechanics, and then guiding lands, like, it, yeah, like the loop was just insane and endless, and no matter where you were in the game, it f always felt fulfilling to keep playing, right? I think that's kind of where it is with Rise, right? Once you hit a certain point, there's not too much to really fulfill you other than combat which is why rise's combat is so fucking good right i think if rise had iceborne combat we would have burned out two months earlier like because like obviously world and iceborne combat's good but add in the monotony of clutch claw yeah. to rise and none of the crazy customization and shit like we're done with that game way clutch claw we became were. like a really it was a script it became a script it was a script we all got yeah for it. It sure like, hop like... in get your slinger hit him once turn bonk hit him again turn bonk all right here's agitator then, now we fight if you start if you do the clagger stuff you when they drool get the clagger hop yep. off start hitting them rinse yeah. and repeat yep. like it was just it like came, scripts. It became a script. The beginning yeah. was a script, and then like every three minutes, the same script inserted itself. But again, the loop was so good. And, you know, outside of those script moments, the combat was amazing um, that, you know, we kept playing. But that loop, man, is just like... Because, I yeah. mean, before, before World, it was always like, I'm just hunting, man. I don't care, whatever. I'll just hunt. Like, it's cool. Let's just fucking play 3U for... I 100 percented that fucking game. It was, that just, game just hunts. Like... You just hunt. That's it. You get different weapons and just hunt. And the combat's good, but yeah, once we got to rise and we had that loop, it was fucking it was burnout, out, man. And it happens. But like, I don't know. I feel like sometimes burnout is a good thing <clears throat> in that <clears throat> it kind of shows you Fucking coughed up a. Is that for me? Coughed up a fucking okay. boogie. No. Um, <laughs> it kind of shows you like what you really want in a game. It's like especially when it's yeah. something like you're hyped about, right? Um, yeah. Because we were fucking hype as hell for Rise. Uh, a lot of you included were fucking hyped as hell for Elden Ring, and it's like the game's good. It's awesome, but at a certain point, you know the honeymoon phase, right? It wears off, and you're like, yeah. All right. 
Maybe I like FromSoft, but I might not need an open world game. What's that? <laughs> or I yeah. like an open world game, but I don't need shit fucking me up every two seconds or whatever. Yeah, and I feel like it's sometimes it's at least for me, it's like it's one thing with Twitter as well that I see people that I follow, um, like enjoying the game and progressing in it, and part of me just wants to keep up with that. So I try to invest the same amount of energy and time in the game, but eventually I I reach a point where I'm like, fuck man, like I'm just. Like right now yeah. I'm stuck on a bus that I just I don't care to fight it right now and that's why I haven't played the game for two for two weeks, you know. Yeah. That's a and total I just thing rather too. Watch people play the game rather than me progress on myself, you know. And now I've just reached a point where most people are done with the game, but I'm not done with it. So it's like fuck it. Yeah. It's like I'm so cool. about that, right? Mm-hmm. I'm the complete opposite. I don't give a fuck what anyone's doing. <laughs> I'm moving at my own pace. Yeah. I don't give a shit. When I play Monster Hunter, I don't care where you is. I'll spend 80 hours doing low rank. I actually, Main oh, Sam me did too. that with Rise. Yeah, yeah, yeah with we, Monster we Hunter, both, that's always me. We were like at 80 hours. We were like, yo, Sam, we just got the hiring. How many hours you got? Uh, 70. Oh, shit, yeah. me too. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Like, yeah, I did I every care. single quest before getting the high rank just to find out that none of that fucking HR carried over. Whole different fucking issue. But that's how I always play Monster Hunter, especially yeah. like prior to World, because that's how the game worked. It was like, I'm going to clear all the village. And it was cool because you would get all this knowledge now. And then people are just getting the high rank for the first time. And they're like, what the fuck is a green Narga Kuga? How did, what is this? And I'm like, Psh, I already know what that is. I got my stun res on. I know that move. I'm dodging this. He does two tail whips. I'm good. But, like, that didn't really matter in Rise because it was all the same fucking roster. But, yeah, that's yeah. just how I've always played it. But, yeah, I mean, some games, yeah, I just take my own pace. But for me, so for Monster Hunter, I'm like Mike. Like, I don't give a fuck what anybody else is doing. Like, fuck it, dude. I'm going to play it at my own pace, whatever. But when it comes to MMOs, I'm totally like Laura. Like, I try to play it at my own pace. But at a certain point, when I get super left behind, I just have, like, no med no fucking motivation. That's, like... Kind of what happened with me in Lost Ark. Like, I still love that game. That game was awesome. Um, people, you know, I I want to, like, learn shit as I play it. I, it's so hard for me when people are like, oh, just ignore it. You'll get it later. Like, I, it's, I can't do that. Like, I, if, I, if this is here and it's in my face and I need to do it, I need to understand everything about it. I can't just, like, ignore it and come back later because I'm just going to forget. I just forget too much shit. So I just do that and fucking lost ark has 8 billion fucking insane systems so like i did all that and now i'm like still going through story and shit and people are like super end game running raids and all this shit and then it just comes back down to me playing an mmo by myself and it's like what the fuck is the point of this why am i well, playing you know, a massively multiplayer online game by myself what was when the, what i played I um here? when i played 14 for the first time i really wanted dark knight and I would always hear about people, you know, doing in-game raids and stuff while I'm like in a realm reborn, just fucking doing this, all this boring shit. Granted, I was sucked into the story, so I was kind of like preoccupied anyway. But mm -hmm. it's like, I think what carried me through that was getting to Heavensward and finally giving, getting Dark Knight. Like, yeah. just the thought of, yeah, if I keep playing this, I get to get Dark Knight, you know? Yeah. So... I don't know, like, I kind of just don't give a fuck about other people in, in those kind of games. Like, I, I don't know. I, I'll You're very play solo fucking, player. I'm very solo. Like, once we got Trust in 14, I did Dungeons with Trust. Like, fuck other people. <laughs> <laughs> because I'd argue with people in that game, too. Like, I'll go into a dungeon, and if the healer's being, like, an asshole, I'll call them out and they'll stop healing me. And then I'll <laughs> die in a dungeon. And then I'm like, why didn't you heal me? It's like you're being a dickhead. Well, you're being a dickhead. You didn't heal me. Do your fucking job. <laughs> what the fuck are you here for? And then like there's always someone in the party who's like, come on, guys, we need to like we can't be doing this. And I'm like, no, nah, fuck that. He can leave. <laughs> like, get him the fuck out of here. Like You're that boy. He's so lovely to play with. He's yeah. <laughs> that fucking player, man. I'm so glad we 
Uh, do we? I don't think we ever played Behemoth together. I would hate together. you in Overwatch, motherfucker. Yeah. I would hate you. <laughs> yeah, listen, listen. There was, um... And I healed too in that game. So you'd be oh like, heal God. me, bitch. I'd be like, motherfucker, I've been on your ass. <laughs> Dude, there was an Alexander mod. I mean, the Alexander uh, raid in 14. And there was one where if you get a marker, you have to move away from the party or else we're going to get poison splashed all over us. This guy had the marker. He ran right into the party and stood there. And I said, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? He said, <laughs> he said, my bad. I was, I'm, I'm really high right now. And I'm like, why the fuck is you smoking? And we're doing a fucking raid. Oh my God. <laughs> He's like, yo, man, why are you coming at me like that? And I'm like, the fuck you mean? Like we hit yeah, a raid. No. I'm, you're wasting my time, bro. Yeah, this is why he's like, a solo player, Lord. This is exactly yeah, why. Yeah, <laughs> you're wasting my time. Like I get mistakes happen, but bro, what the fuck? It's like it's a running joke in 14. Then we, when everyone gets a marker for the first time, they freak out and they're just running all over the place. So it's like you get the marker, you know, there's a certain the way the arrow's pointing. You know that either you got to go away from the party or come to the party to stack. There's a lot of players that get the stack marker and they run away from the party. And we're like, <laughs> where is you going? Yeah, like, no, that's me. That's why I'm supposed to stack. Yeah, no, that's like, me. I don't know what the fuck is going on. That literally happened in Lost Ark. That this is this happened. There was this whole mechanic where this boss, uh, like you you take his health down and he he like yeah. flashes this certain color. And then you have to go to these orbs of the color that he flashed, and it's different mechanics. every time. Yeah. And yeah, and the mechanics is really cool, but I just couldn't see the flash. It's like he would like he, his health would go down, and this like surge of energy would come out of him, and it'd be either red or white or something. And it kept happening. I was like, I I don't see this. I I, Yo, I don't see this if color. If you're a random I can't player to me, I would have been is. like, bro, what is you doing? And like, I was this in that thing with random. six times, bro. This is what Fix happened. It. I was. I was with randoms and they were like, this random dude was like, Sam, go to the orb. I was like, dude, I don't know what fucking color this is. I can't see this. I do not see what this color is. And I was streaming and some Moy was in chat with like part of our community and I was with two other randoms. So Moy kind of overcompensated and did my part for me because I just yeah. straight up could not see this fucking color. I was like, all right, you're, you're telling me what I need to do. You're telling me what I need to look at. I'm looking. I'm looking, I'm not distracted. I don't see this fucking color. I don't know what I'm looking for here. So I just couldn't fucking do it. And then, so Moy did it for me and we finally beat it. And this fucking dickhead is like, like the random, random three was the dickhead. Random four was just another random. And random four was like, cool, I'm glad we did it. Awesome. Smiles. And then random three was like, yeah, just the three of us. And I was like, you know what? I'm fucking out of here. I'm, fu I'm leaving. I'm never playing fucking randoms ever again. This is fucking bullshit. This guy is what if I and the thing is the thing I was Yo. really pissed about because at the moment I was just angry and, and ironically seeing red, but I really I'm I'm trying to get better at it. I'm trying to get better at it. But at the moment, I really should have said, fuck you, I'm colorblind, and then see what he fucking thought. That's what I really should have said. Because then you know he would have felt crazy? like shit. I would have been like, if you would have said that, I can I can see this now happening in 14. Where there's a color mechanic, and I'm like, bro, what is you doing? You 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 failed this so many times. We've been here for an hour. Oh, I'm colorblind. <laughs> I would be like, well, put the colorblind settings on. Like, <laughs> the fuck, man. But like, that's the thing. It's because this was my first time doing it. So it was like, even if that was the case, I didn't even know that was a fucking mechanic until I yeah. got there. I was like, I don't know what this is. But yeah, I was like, yeah, and nah, I'm cool, man. That's why. Again, I'm like right in between. It's like I like the community stuff, but I can only do it with friends. I can only do it with friends because it's yeah. fucking I do. I get some shitter like that and I'm like, I'm out. I'm, I'm checked out. I'm out of here, man. I'm done. <laughs> and that's the only raid I did in that game because, again, now everybody that I do know is way fucking further than me. So it's like, all right, cool. We can raid. But like, you're only doing this to help me. You're not doing this because you want to. And like, that just doesn't feel the same. It's like. It's like uh, when you were playing fucking Elden Ring and John was just killing shit for you. It's like, yo, this isn't the same, man. Like, you're just carrying me through this shit. Yeah. You're not doing this because, yeah. like, you also need the content. But, yeah. Um, that actually goes into the fucking... The next thing I was going to say is, despite, despite, despite all that bullshit I said about randoms, 
I actually was doing some random hunts. Oh, and yeah. it was actually really fun. Surprisingly. Uh, that We were hunting earlier a couple weeks ago, and I like lost my save data, or I thought I lost it. And then I finally recovered it the next day. And I was like, well, fuck it. I got the save data. I might as well use it. So I just did some hunts, and I was like, I don't know. Nobody's fucking playing because it's Rise. So I just looked up a random <laughs> lobby, somebody who was like kind of around my HR. I just hopped in, and uh, they were helping somebody else out. And we were just like doing hunts. I wasn't asking or posting or anything. Um, and we were just doing hunts and it was cool. And then they were just sitting around. So I was like, all right, whatever. I'll just, I'll post some stuff. And they were just hunting. They were just joining along. We did, they were like, oh, I, I like your dog. What what skin is that? And I was like, oh, it's, it's the Okami skin. They're like, oh, cool. Um, <laughs> and then I posted the, uh, the triple elder super event. And I was gunning because I had my gunner set. So I was like, I'm going to fucking gun this shit. Uh, and I fucking triple carded heavy, hard. <laughs> <laughs> I triple carded that quest hard. And I was, like, this dude's, I was like, this dude's going to just kick me out the lobbies and be like, all right, I'm fucking over this. Cause it's shitty fights anyway. Right? Like, it's not like I'm triple carding yeah. on something that's fun. It's fucking Camellios, Kushala and yeah. Tio. And they all fucking suck and rise. So this isn't a fun quest. I'm just doing it. Cause I need to kill them. Uh, so I was like, this dude's going to be like, all right, get out of here, man. And he's like, not that it matters, but he is higher HR than me. So it was like, okay, here's a little fucking low HR baby, yeah. triple carding in my quest, get the fuck out of my hub. But he was like, nah, just post it again. We'll run it. And then he just switched his setup. We did it. Some other random hopped in the hopped in the lobby and then hopped in the quest. We were life powdering, healing each other. We were like on the same page. It was really crazy. Like we'd kill one monster and then all of us would far cast her back to get our items. No, nobody yeah. said like yo, make sure to go back and get your items or whatever. We were all just like, all right, we need to re-up. Monster down, Hell far yeah. caster. We went back in. People were throwing their hard shell powders, their, their like attack powders. It was, it was cool. And I was like, this is awesome. Like, I haven't had this type of just random nice. monster hunter hunting experience since like 3U. And yeah. it, was, it was really cool. It, I didn't play it again the next day, but I was like, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know that that hasn't happened to me since i played god eater 2 rage burst um there you could do multiplayer uh story quests mm -hmm. so there was this random person i met in the lobby and we just played through the story for like seven hours straight that's awesome just me and him Aww. just playing through the story like yeah it was great and i thought yeah, like cool. i was like Maybe after this quest, he might dip. Well, nah, we yeah. just play, we played till the that's, credits rolled. That's and then awesome. We're like, Yo, that's, that that's was what cool, kept bro. happening. Every quest, I was like, ah, oh, they're just gonna dip soon. Uh, they'll be yeah. like, all right, this is enough. And I was doing the um, the uh, I I got all my the blossom layered right because usually yeah. when I'm hunting with people and you post the same quest more than two times, they're like, all right, man, like what the yeah. fuck? I'm done Come with on, like, man. Are you we gotta done? do something else, man. Yeah, let's do yeah. something else. But like, I posted it like four <laughs> times because of course I had terrible luck. Got one ticket every time except the fucking last one. And I got like five tickets and I was like, all right, thanks. But I posted it and I kept posting it and they were just hopping in, joining. Cool. I was like, this is awesome. Because last time I hunted with randoms, I went in there, died twice, came back from the hub and they fucking kicked my ass out. I was like, all right, man. <laughs> <laughs> Man. All right. <laughs> so I was expecting some type of shit like that, especially when I triple carded on that. Cause it wasn't, it wasn't like a quick triple card either. We got all the way to the TO and the TO had skulls and then I fucking died and all three cards are mine. And I was like, he's going to be like, bro, I, you just wasted 20 <laughs> minutes of my time. Get the fuck out of here. And he was like, run it back. Yeah. I was like, dude, that's awesome. So yeah, that was cool. I added his guild card and everything. So maybe I'll hunt with him again. Uh, it was Man. cool, and that's it was rare. That was a rare, rare random experience. Listen, there's something I gotta say real quick. Laura, you look high as fuck right now. <laughs> <laughs> what like do you, you mean? You can't hide it. You like no, no you like this. You 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 are fucked. Fuck like, you, man. I know, <laughs> but I'm just embracing it. So kiss my she's ass. She's vibing. <laughs> I think yeah. the eyeliner is is accentuating it too. Yeah, the eyeliner yeah. is definitely accentuating. I got it I got little eyes today. It's okay. <laughs> They're usually not very open, anyways. It's okay. <laughs> we vibing. I'm cool with the vibe. Let it See, slide. You know what? This is a this is a safe space, Spike. You know, 
Yeah. If Laura, if Laura wants to wants to tote up and have her have her her, her angel eyes going, yeah, it's a course. safe space. Yeah. See? Now, talk well, about I'm a transition. Oh. What do you do when you have no safe space? How do you deal with that? You just die. Okay. <laughs> yeah, everybody you, needs one. <laughs> yeah, everybody yeah. needs one, or else you're you're probably gonna die. Like, yeah, that's uh, that's where I was at today, man. It's it's fucked. That's why I, I fucking I left the house. I mean, I mentioned it earlier. I left. I didn't. I didn't go into what I did. Like yeah. I said, I woke up. Fucking cat was pissing me the fuck off three times in a row, and I was like, all right, dude, I got nowhere to go. <laughs> I I gotta just go. I don't know where I'm going. So, like I said, I, I, I went out and did my errands, ran my errands, and then I went to the park, and I was just walking. I was just walking around the park, and, I, and I, I, tried to, I tried to apply some life to it. Like, I was walking towards the woods. I was like, I'm just going to the woods, walk on the path, and I was like, no, I'm not going to follow the path. So, you've been telling me to do my whole life. I'm going to make my own path. I'm going to walk along the river because I want to look at the water. So, I was walking along the river. Kind of, kind of got angled bank. It was just like bank and then river. Another side I could go over. I was doing fucking real life Tomb Raider, man. I had to fucking cross <laughs> the river. I found it. I, I was like hopping on rocks. I was, I was sliding a little bit. My shoes got muddy as hell. I was like, fuck it, dude. Any other moment, I'd be Bro. like, oh my shoes. I'm oh, fuck. I was like, dude, whatever, man. Who cares? I can get another pair right now if I want to. It's fine. So I was like, fuck it. I'm gonna embrace this. So I was just walking outside. And it was cool. It was awesome. I was like, and it, it was, it was the really cool part. Cause I was walking and it happened like two or three times. Where I was like, I should just go back on the path. Cause I don't know how I'm going to do this. And it sounds like so cliche, right? It sounds like super cliche, but it was literally like, I could just, I could just go back and just take the easy route or I could just like tackle this. Like I should, I could just tackle this. I could just like find the, find a way to get across this, this little Creek. And that's what I did. I was like, I had to like walk up a little bit. My feet got a little wet, got a little muddy. I got, got across and I was like, kept walking. And I was like, oh, I got to cross again. And this time I couldn't go anywhere else. Like I had to, I had to deal with it. <laughs> Cause like it was a big slope of like a muddy hill that I couldn't walk up or I had to go back where I came. And I was like, I just got to cross this. I just got to cross this Creek again. So my feet got a little wet, had some wet socks. Fuck it, man. I'm out in the woods. Fuck it. Well, I'll get, I'll get through it. And then I had to, I crossed over, was trying to go up the hill. I, I had to go up the hill at this point, muddy hill, fucking, I don't have, I didn't have hiking boots. These are fucking gym sneakers. So I'm fucking <laughs> sliding on the hill and shit. I'm, I'm holding on to this tree, trying to slide, not to fall. And I'm like, I'm literally holding, I swear to God, I was fucking Laura Croft, man. There was like a root, it was like a tree root. And I was like fucking pulling the root, trying to get up the hill. And it didn't work. I slid down. I fell a little bit. And then I was like, no I got to find a different, I got to find a different way. Looked across. There were some more broken trees, like big trees. So I got, while I was, while I was trying to pull the root, I got me a walking stick. I grabbed me a walking stick. This motherfucker my way went on a whole adventure in the woods. Yo, I swear to God. <laughs> God I, I had my whole walking stick. I, I went across over to the tree. And I used the tree as like my anchor with the walking stick to get up. Yo. And I got, I made my, I made my way up the fucking, up the hill, up the muddy hill. And I got he up top and I was like. Pan's Labyrinth looking for a safe place, man. He had a <laughs> yes. whole nature arc. It nature's was sick. Arc. And I got up to the top and I was like back on the path again. But like I took a different route and I was like, I did that. I did that. Just me. Bro, you I just, had I did character that. development right there. Like, and I was like, you know what? And both times, like when I when I went when I got to the hill and I slid back down, there was like a big tree that I was able to like kind of anchor on. And I was like, I should just like go home. <laughs> I should just get out of here. And I was like, no, 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 fuck it. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna figure out a way. And it honestly, it felt like I was in a game and I just wasn't looking at the right path. It was crazy. <laughs> And I looked over and I was like, oh shit, I can use that tree. I can climb up with that tree. And I did, and I was walking around. And you know, I walked in the woods a little bit. I went pretty far. Um, and then you know, I made my way back. And I took a different route back. Look, talk I, cliche, I know. But like I was in this, I was in the park, and the part of the park is like a big hill. Uh, and I kind of like it's a let me see if I could. 
see if I was in VR, I could just draw this and I could just show it to you. <laughs> So it's like a, it's like a, the park is like a big hill. The park's like down here. So I was like walking kind of this way. And then on the way back up, I took a different path, path back. So I was kind of at like the top of the hill by the time I came back out. And it was like, you know, I changed the angle and I ended up at the top of the hill. I just had to change a little, change a little, change your view, change, change the look, change a little angle. And I was at the top of the whole mountain and it was cool, man. It was cool. Now, you know, hey. I jogged my little you self down. What? Listen, the two of y'all, you got nature in your backyard, right? I don't That's why that I'm shit. telling you to come over. In my I'm backyard. surrounded by fucking pollution <laughs> all the time. <laughs> pollution, the hood, city, people, well, you're in noise. City. Well, I think, I don't, I don't know what Montreal and I love like, it. I mean, that's a city too. Well, yeah, but I, it's really hard to find nature in New York. That's why I'm unless telling you to come like, the fuck over. The park is right there. It's I know, a two minute yeah. walk from my place, bro. We can I, have a, a a wildlife adventure. Two the last, two. Yo, the last time I've been in the forest was at a theme park. <laughs> like so, a fake forest. I, it was at the Jurassic Jesus Wor Christ Jurassic Park ride. It, you know, the, so Universal has a Jurassic Park like zip liner thing, and you 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 zip line through a forest. That's the last forest I've been. In. Oh my god! <laughs> so it was a fake one, basically. Yeah, yeah a fake yes. forest, <laughs> a nice. fake ass forest. So, so what's the man. last real forest you've been to, man? I don't even, bro. The last time I've been like. And like nature was when I went to Key West and I saw like the crystal clear ass water. Not even crystal clear, it was like it was like emerald like really colored blue water. Yeah. Like blue green. Like yeah. that's the last time I was around like real nature. Otherwise, yeah, nah. I'm not. Yeah, bro. you gotta you gotta come over, man. This you are like an hour and a half away. That's it. It's an hour and a half away, and you could be with a homie, trying out VR, walking in the woods, experiencing some nature, seeing a little water. It's not hard, man. You got you got friends, and hey, maybe one day we take a little road trip, go up north, see what Laura's up to up there. Get some get some little get some little Tim. Oh shit, what are they called? The Tim Timmy Tim Jimmies. Timmies. Yeah. Tim Timmies. Yeah. <laughs> Eat get some, some poutine. Tim Eat some. All right. Uh... Some uh, beaver stills and shit. What's yeah, called? I don't know what the hell that is. I'll eat it. <laughs> I'll try it. <laughs> it's basically a flat donut that's shaped like a beaver still. Oh, and fuck you yeah. put toppings on it, like Nutella or like bananas or like apple and maple syrup. It sounds like it's like a donut okay. crepe. Yeah, crepe. Pretty much. Yeah, I'm with it. That's amazing. I'm with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was that was my that was my adventure. Because I had to find some kind of space. Cause, yeah, I I don't know. I I don't. I was like, dude, I don't know what I'm doing today. I gotta I gotta find something to just kill this time. <laughs> um, but yeah, sometimes I mean, your own place is like not even necessarily yeah. and, your safe place. So you just and have this to is <laughs> yeah, this is kind own. of a first uh, for me personally. Not, I mean, I kind of dealt with some stuff. In, in high school, um, my mom and my mom and I, we were going through like some moving stuff, but it was like one of those things where well, I had a lot of, <laughs> it sounds real sad, a lot more friends back then, but like IRL friends to hang out with to kind of distract myself from that stuff. And it was also kind of like, uh, I knew it wasn't permanent. It's, it was temporary. Like we were in between stuff. Um, so I was like, this is, this is, you know, it's going to be over, right? It's, it's going to, it's going to be over, but it's, it's a little bit different when you don't feel like you have something and you don't know when you're going to get something. Uh, it, it weighs on you a little bit differently. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was my today. I mean, we talked about it earlier. I was like, I'm kind of, kind of fucked up feeling a lot better now. I appreciate you guys. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Have you guys dealt with not having a safe space when you needed one or 
what usually is your safe space aside from home or anything like that? Well, for me, it's not necessarily a physical place. It's more relationship with people that I find to be a safe place. Like, I don't know, especially throughout the pandemic and having to work from home and I live alone and I live like my family is like three hours and a half away from me. So like a lot of the times my place, which used to be my safe place pre pandemic, just kind of became a fucking prison yeah. of just like anxiety and depression and stress and loneliness. So people have just become more of a safe place as in like, if I need to vent about something or if I need to feel better, I turn towards people that will just receive me in any situation, no matter how messy or how sensitive I am. And that for me is a safe place. It's not necessarily so much like an environment, but mm -hmm. I also remember at the beginning of the pandemic, like I remember the day the government like announced that every non-essential workers had to work from home or just like stop working. And I remember like going to the grocery store after work that day and seeing like the empty shelf and stuff and just realizing like I didn't feel safe in Montreal and I needed to get the fuck out because Montreal mm -hmm. is an island. And I remember freaking the fuck out that like if they were going to stop anybody from entering or exiting the island yeah, and that fucked. freaked me out. Yeah. yeah. So I actually went back with a parent for like three months. Mm -hmm. And that became a safe place for a little bit because like the young city I was living in for the last five years, like didn't feel safe anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's Just crazy, because, right? When you have yeah. it's like, like this, like this has always been like, no matter what, I mean, since, I mean, I moved in here 2017, it was like, no matter what, I'm good. If I'm here, I'm cool. Like I deal with all types of bullshit. The moment I leave the door, when everything's out, when I got to whatever, and then I come here and like, I'm good. And then it's crazy when you get to a point where it, you try to, you try to relax and like, you like, it's like, you can't take your fucking jacket off. Like I, I can't, it doesn't matter what I do. I can't get this fucking jacket off. Like I'm still like, I need to leave. And it's a, it's, it's an adjustment, right? It's crazy. And it's, it's, I mean, you never see it coming until it happens. Right. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely an adjustment. And I mean, I'll just, be honest a lot of the stuff i've been doing is hope trying to be a distraction i mean like i don't know how much more obvious going into vr can be <laughs> for, for that kind of thing uh but i mean it is what it is and especially when you can't really change it uh you just gotta do the fucking man just fight through it shut up and deal with it shut up and dribble as they say but <laughs> like yeah i don't know and what, what about you, Mike? I mean, I know you've, especially r recent relationship stuff, I don't know how much you want to dig into it, but I know that was, we've, we've had talks <laughs> being in that kind of situation. Um, I mean, <clears throat> normally, I would say when I lived with my mom, my safe space was <clears throat> my grandmother's house. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. I was always surrounded by my siblings and I have too many of them. Yeah. There's too many goddamn kids. <laughs> How many? Um, I have nine siblings. What? That is wild. Yeah. That's yeah. Insane. So what? And, and I'm the Where oldest. You... So okay. Okay. It it's it's too fucking much. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's too. You know, when my sister was really small, she was such an annoying son of a. <laughs> God <laughs> damn. And then we had different fathers, so like, if I got mad and wanted to like mush her, her father would take offense and be like, "Don't be yeah. touching my daughter." And it's like she's my sister. Like, get out of here. Control your goddamn daughter. Like, it was just <laughs> insane. Um, yeah. and then me and my mom would fight and I have so much love for my mom and we're like the same person at this point and that's why we fight because we're so yeah. much alike um it was just a lot um so I would run to grandma's house and I would do that shit even when I was maybe like nine years old my mom moved from her mom's house down the block to a two-family house Whenever my mom would get on my nerves, it was this one time 
my mom was like really yelling at me i think she beat me with a belt because i did something really bad mm -hmm. i had nothing but my pamper on <laughs> almost <laughs> butt ass naked <laughs> and i said i'm going to grandma's house she said you going where i said watch me and i <laughs> left the, i left the apartment and i literally ran to grandma's house and nothing but my pamper and i rang the doorbell my grandfather opened the door. He was like, Michael? I was like, <laughs> I, tell grandma open the door. Like, <laughs> like, I, I don't want to be home right now. I want to come here. And that, like, I think for the past 20 or so years, that house has been my safe spot. If my mom is just pissing me off, I'm going to grandma's house. Like, yeah. And it got to the point where me and my mom had such a bad argument to... I'm not going to incriminate my mom because it's, it's not even something that's incriminating. But we had a little bit of a fight and I was upset and I went... I raised, I raised my hand. I was not going to hit her, but I was like... Mm. And then I tapped her leg like this. <laughs> and listen, let me tell you something. As soon as I tapped her leg, she said, Motherfucker. She went to the closet. Yeah. There was a yeah, pole. Nah. The pole on the closet. She said, Do that shit again. And I was like, No, <laughs> you right. You got it. You got it. I was like, Chill. I was like, Yeah. Like, all right, chill out. You know, and after that fight, you know, I was like, I'm going to just go to grandma's house for a while and then, you know, we'll cool off. And then I just, I just been there ever since. Yeah. And, you know, I still visit my mom and everything. And we talk and we have a good relationship, but, um, I guess growing up as a teenager, I was a fucking, I was always respectful to my mom, but it's like after a point I would have anger outburst. And it would get kind of crazy. So, yeah. But yeah, safe space for me now is my own head. Honestly, I think and that's, that's why... crazy because that could easily be the most unsafe space. <laughs> yeah, it, it could <laughs> be. Yeah, people. for many reasons. Yeah. But I think. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Same. That is I, I, a, a lot I of the times nah, the most bro. unsafe space nah, for me. I get my, my own head. Is toxic as shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, it kind of it kind of works in most cases. I'll just tune out, play video games, watch movies, and you know I'll feel fine. But uh, it's a distraction, you know. But yeah, it's as much as a safe place as I can have at this point, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I, don't know. I mean, that's what I was just saying. Like. Me hopping in VR, going out in the woods and all that kind of stuff. Like, essentially, yeah. it's distraction, but those distractions help you feel better, at least in the moment. Sometimes bring you down a bit for when you have to address what you got to address. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think those are those would be a safe space. But, yeah, um, it was interesting, man. Like, and that's that I, I've like hiked and stuff before. Um, I've. Sometime in college, like me and my buddies, we took a trip to like Tennessee. We went, we hiked a mountain. This is going to sound like I'm fucking flexing or whatever. But like in high school, we went, <laughs> took a trip to like uh, Europe and stuff. And we like climbed a mountain and all that type of shit in like Switzerland. And it was like cool, but like that was all field trip. Like this is a trip. We're doing a thing. Um, and as far as scale, what I did there compared to this little ass park I went to. It was like this park was fucking nothing but the mental state of just one being alone because i've always been with people on these trips being alone and just telling myself to figure it out don't go back go forward and figure it out and then getting through it and you know, coming out the other side uh was really cool and uh i've I don't know, maybe in sports, maybe I felt something like that, but in this kind of situation, yeah, I've never experienced a thing like that before. Like purely from a 
solitary aspect. Uh, it was cool. It was cool. Um, and I'm sure I'll go back out there and walk again, but just to, you know, take my mind off of things and stuff like that. But yeah, I felt like fucking Laura Croft, man. I was, and it's like one of those things where I'm sure if, if somebody else was looking at it, it was like, what the fuck is this dude doing? I'm like, this is this. it's like, yeah, it's like fucking six inches of rock in between. It's like, dude, just walk. Like, what are you, what are you doing? But like in my head, it was like fucking, I had like the doof, 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 like crazy music fucking playing. I'm like fucking, yeah, I'm like, I'm just like the most, in, in it's like as a kid, right? It's like a kid thinks they're in like a whole fucking spaceship. They're like on a whole different planet and they're just in like a eight foot by eight foot backyard with like a couple of rocks. It's like, all right, dude. <laughs> I just think yeah. of all the times I went on a walk to a park and like it's during the season where it's like snow's melting but not completely melted and stuff. And sometimes I'm just trying to avoid puddles and stuff and I think I'm really fucking smart. But I just end up in a fucking puddle of mud and everything and you're just in deep shit and you don't have the appropriate shoes for it. Yes. And you're like, fuck man. Yeah, like, that's what I happened. really tried my hardest to just like avoid every obstacle and I just like put myself in a worse situation ever. All right, yeah. then I guess I have fucking soaked ass shoes and socks and i'm just gonna like my fucking way yeah. out home and shit like <laughs> that's man. what happened but that that's uh. like what because i was trying to go through the whole thing and like not get super muddy and then like i slipped at one point my foot got in the water i was like well oh i guess my socks well, wet that's it <laughs> <laughs> and then like i was trying to go up that that hill and then i started like sliding back down i was like all right well i guess my whole shoe's fucking mud now so whatever there's i might as well just keep going there's no recovery at this uh. point but yeah and i had all right it it really felt like a video game because i had i had I, I was like climbing i got a walking stick that like helped me and as i was going through all the stuff the stick kept breaking down and getting shorter until i got to the end and then it was just like a little stub and i was like dude Fucking breath of the wild dude with that's weapon, what it felt like... it was crazy it was so crazy durability yeah, weapon it durability was, IRL. <laughs> it was it was IRL weapon durability, and it only and it broke mm. when I was like using it. Like every time I was like trying to get up somewhere, or, like walk somewhere, get over some shit, and like it snapped. It was crazy. It that has to be that has to be where where video games come from. Somebody just going outside and doing shit. It's crazy. So you know, problems. They, Make a game they have that cringy ass shirt where it's like, um, it's like. I've been outside, but the graphics aren't that good. Like you know, one of those shitty t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nah, bro. Nah, them graphics was crazy. That was crazy out there. That was crazy. The character development was nuts. Uh, 3090 <laughs> looks exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. That was that was cool. Um, I think we only got like, oh, I'm I meant to bring that up earlier, but um, especially since it happened like last week. Fucking E3's canceled. It's out of here. Like this year or forever? I don't know. I hopefully forever, because what's the point? Right? I don't know. I, I don't feel like E3 needs needs to happen anymore. I mean, I went uh well, well, I think Laura 20... has something to say. Well, I don't know. It's e like E3 is one of these things as a teenager that I've always watched like religiously every year. So yeah. I've always kind of like a little dream secretly of going to one of them one day and just attend. But at the same time, like, I don't know. I feel like the last couple of years, it's just been like disappointing and just shitty. I mean, to be honest, game conferences in the last couple of years have just been overall fucking disappointing and cringe and just presenters are just making me feel uncomfortable to watch and i just don't even want to be there and i just like i don't know i just watch the trailers like when they're uploaded to youtube once the conference is over because i don't want to deal with the conference itself see i think it's but, one of those things yeah. by like growing up right because as a kid uh i think it's like anybody right and when you when you it's like backseating somebody who's just super passionate about something and they haven't met somebody who's into the same thing so like Oh, well, if you go around this way, it's uh, relax, relax. Okay. It's okay. And now yeah. we're at a point where like video games existing is just a thing. That's whatever. Like, all right, cool. Like everybody fucking knows what a video game is. It's all right, here's, they're talking about it as a kid, like E3, it's like, Oh fuck. Like I, I would have like a schedule on my phone. Cause this is the only time there was a big thing happening related to video games. Now it's like we got Twitch and YouTube and 
all this other shit. So it's like, and then, you know, companies are way uh, more open and interactable now any through like Twitter and all kinds of stuff, right? Like as a kid, I didn't hear anything from Sony, Xbox, or Nintendo unless it was at this, right? I wouldn't know anything unless I found a magazine or some shit, right? I wouldn't know what the hell was going on. But I feel like now um, there's... I don't, there's not much point. And, and E3, it specifically has been, I mean, they opened up to the public, uh, I guess more than a few years back, but they, it was always, um, a media thing, right? Only people who were press only go. Yeah. Yeah. Press only. Right. Uh, and then they recently opened it up to public and that's when I went, uh, I think that was 2018. Oh, you went to one. Yeah. yeah, that was when I that was the first time I met Socks was at in person oh. was uh was at E3. And it was a really cool time. It was awesome. Um yeah. but I think he part of that being to... hmm? he went to Yeah, I think Yeah, I went with yeah, I went with John as well. Um yeah. and I think part of that being as awesome as it E3. was oh, yeah. was because I was partially media-ish in knowing Socks and being into the, you know, monster and stuff like that. Um, because I think, cause it's, it's an event that was based off of press only, like, especially before times of online distribution, like you come here to try a game cause you can't try it anywhere else. And then you write an article about it and do all that. And that's yeah. kind of the basis of how E3 was. And then once it got public, it was trying to like be packs, but still be like media at the same time. And it's like, it was just weird feeling of like nobody felt like they're supposed to be here <laughs> like like i'm walking mm-hmm. around and it's like i i'm here but like if i'm just by myself i'm just a random dude like doing shit and there's like all this press shit that you need to like go backstage to know somebody to do and it's like well why am i here if that's what's going on and then if you're press and you're just trying to go do some shit and there's no back door or whatever you're just waiting in the line with a bunch of people and it's like well i'm here to do work I'm not here to wait in the line. So like, what's the, what, what's going on here? Um, so it was yeah. like this weird mix of in between. And then uh, I feel th- there's all that shit going on when they could just uh, upload a demo, like here, go play the demo. You could yeah. just go, you can just go play it at home. <laughs> here's a, here's a stream of everything that's coming out in the next like two years. So like, I mean, the whole merch shit and all that stuff is cool. And I mean, it's in L.A. It's cool to visit and all that kind of stuff. But honestly, I feel... But it's expensive as fuck, no, to go to... Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's expensive to... All fucking cons are expensive, right? Um, So, yeah, especially when you're flying, plane ticket, hotel, all that shit. So, like, I don't even really think about the cost. But to attend... To attend even like just the event itself, isn't it like 250 or 300 bucks just for like... Yeah, goddamn. itself. Yep, but... See, yeah. that's the thing, though. I I can't really credit them or, or put that against them because I mean, PAX is the same thing. Like PAX East is happening, I think next yeah. month or this month. And I was I'm not going, but I was just curious. I was like, how much are the tickets? Fucking three hundred dollars for the whole weekend, just to attend these tickets. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. oh, that's not um, too bad. I mean, I guess, but like you throw in that, you throw in hotel, travel. If you have to travel, like it's not cheap. The whole event isn't cheap. So, like, yeah. at this point, I've been to enough conventions where it's like, look, unless there's something that is specifically for me uh, and yeah. subsidizing some of this cost, like, I'm cool. Uh, That's why I like having cons in New York, which usually aren't that great. But when they are here, it's like, all you got to do is buy your ticket, go there, go home. That's it. Yeah. Well, it's because you, you live in New York. About... Well, I know. <laughs> but I, I mean, like, in general, like, let's say if I lived across the street from the convention center where E3 is. It's like that's that's awesome. Like yeah, yeah, if you're close, but like way more people who aren't close go to these events than people who are close. That's just like the yeah. nature of the world, right? Like So if I wanted to go to something like that, I would probably end up costing 2k in total for everything. Yeah, for like fuck that. Go- for yeah, like exactly. The hotel, right? the flight, getting food while I'm there and shit. Yeah, like, food, travel, 2K. Ubers, all that stuff. Yeah, and it's like easily two uh, k. And why I it's never like win. if the yeah, it's like if the goal is just to hear about some shit that they're gonna put a YouTube out like 
the next day after you heard about it, it's like, I'm cool. I'm going to pay like, all of that to go in line to play a demo for like yeah. three hours? No thanks. Yeah, and it's like, like, that's like the kind of stuff that makes like packs and even like, I mean, MAGFest is like a whole experience. But as far as gaming stuff, you know, there's packs and, you know, they have panels, they have like contests, they have like a whole land center to just hang out and just do shit. Like it's a whole thing. So with packs existing, I don't see much need of E3 being a gaming convention because it's not a gaming convention. It's a press convention, but press isn't needed because you companies have to pay to be at E3. So it's like companies have to pay to be there and then attendees have to pay to be there. So E3 is just getting all this isn't fucking money. Sony, isn't Sony already out of E3 since a couple yeah, of years ago now? Yeah, Nintendo is too. I, I think, yeah. Well, Sony, no, all, the big three well, are. So I think, I know Sony and Xbox are because Xbox all had their own event. Out. Yeah, yeah, Xbox has Sony their, have had their, their own, own event. State of play now, like across the street. When I was at E3, nothing Microsoft was in E3, but there was like a big convention center across the street, and they just did their own thing there. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah, I know Sony's out of it. It just doesn't make it. sense anymore. Like, <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, just, just put your streams out, do what they've been doing, and then obviously, pandemic like forced that, and it was like, all right, yeah. we really don't need this. Um, See, so yeah, I get it. And that on the West Coast, they got PAX Prime or whatever in Seattle. On the East, they got PAX East. There's like, I don't think there's PAX South anymore, but it's like you got both coasts for video game conventions. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And I just think it's weird. And even past the attendee part, like paying to show your demos when you could just put them online, like from a developer side, especially if you're like an indie developer. It's like I got to pay thousands of dollars to just be on this floor for maybe some people to play it. Like, I'm yeah. cool. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, E3's canceled. I don't know if it's just this year or not, but uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't see much need for it anymore, which I mean, from a historical sense kind of sucks because, you know, like you said, there's nostalgia of being excited for E3 and like, oh, man, what's going to be announced now? But I mean, yeah, like three years ago, I remember like we organized in a server a bunch of people that all said they were going to watch it together. And we yeah. were 15 in the Discord call. And like, I remember because it's the I remember because I think it's the same year that world got announced yeah but me i was losing my shit over like shadow of the colossus was getting remastered on ps4 and mm -hmm. they announced it and i fucking screamed on the call and it was just like i don't know <laughs> like i bought some stacks and bought my fucking gatorade yeah. for the night and we were just like 15 nerds in a discord call just watching e3 together yeah, and it was, it was cool. just cool you know yeah and, and the same thing remember, like the world yeah at GameStop back in the days, like uh, we would buy a bunch of pizza and go to one of the like employees' place and oh, just watch it cool. all together, and just yeah, it was just sick. But so it's gonna be a bummer like that if it's canceled forever. But at the same time, like I don't know, we don't need it anyway. I've, yeah, yeah, because like each got... company, like Sony, Sony, um, Microsoft, and Nintendo, just do their own fucking conferences, and I'm yeah. gonna each watch of them and see whatever the fuck yeah because i mean nintendo out. does their nintendo directs and fucking internet blows up whenever there's anything cool in it um you yeah. know sony has their thing microsoft had they, they had their their stream or whatever so it's like the information is so easy to deliver now that like these platforms aren't really needed anymore um especially yeah. when it costs both parties <laughs> to to do that when they could just do it on their own like for me like indie games right like they could just like, yeah, there's the whole side of, you know, a lot more eyes on it. But like, man, especially with well, I feel like indie games are so much more prevalent now to that. Especially, I mean, Nintendo has a whole direct. They have the Nintendo indie game directs now just dedicated to indie games. So it's like you get your stuff in one of there in, in that or, you know, there's I know they do like their demos. I think in Xbox, they have like Game Pass demos and shit like that. So it's like it's so easy to distribute that stuff now that. I don't think it's needed too much anymore. It was cool going to yeah. LA, but as far as the whole event and all the stuff it takes to go in there, it's like, it's a lot. Just go to PAX. I feel like for game, game devs, like, 
It must be a time of the year that always brings a lot of stress because oh like a lot God, of studios yeah. might want E3 to get demos. the fucking demo out yeah. ready in time. And it's just like, dude, like if you remove that out of the equation in the schedule of a year, forgive them. It's like... Just fucking focus on your game and get a trailer out whenever it's ready. Like, yeah. forget about these big conferences. Yeah, I that mean, you that's think like you must present your game by that yeah. fucking time of the year. Otherwise, you, you f fucking missed out the biggest window of the year to announce your title. Like, who gives a fuck? Yeah. Like, I don't even remember when. Um, what's the game that po people like lost their shit about? Like, Black Myth Wukong or whatever. Oh, the monkey. Like the, yeah, yeah. It's not out. Or, yeah. That didn't come out, right? Yeah, but that... Nope. No, that didn't come oh, out. But, okay. like, the trailer came out of nowhere. I feel like that wasn't presented at any conferences or anything. That's just, like, people woke up to it on Twitter someday, and they were like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. And people just checked it out, and it just blew up. And it's just, like... I, I'd much rather stories like that for games than just, like, I don't know. Oh, the big-ass shit that everybody watched at E3 that was so predictable that, you know, I don't know. Yeah, and like... then that's the thing too. Like, there's always that comparison, right, between the game and the E3 demo, and they're not the same yep. all the time, all the fucking time. And it's like, you know what? That listen, <laughs> I think we just triggered Mike. <laughs> I had to deal with like for two games, I've had to deal with that shit, and it's like people become so attached to those demos, yo, like. And I remember, like, when Winter 3 came out, the downgrade gate, like, wow, they fucking downgraded this game. It's not the same. And you got mods trying to replicate what the demo was doing, like, yep. you know, it's, it's so annoying. Jesus yeah, yeah, it's weird. I think I even saw some of it for, like, Elden Ring. I don't think it was too different for um, Elden Ring. No, it wasn't like, that The comparisons different. always yeah. happen, though, and it's like, you could just make your game what it's going to be as far as like yeah. for the most part, like obviously games change from development to release. Right. Yeah. But a lot of the times in these E3 demos, they'll add a whole lot of shit. That's just not going to be there. Cause they got to meet that E3. And it's like, it's going to be a cinematic trailer. You know, mean shit. Oh my <laughs> fucking God. <laughs> God damn, uh, man. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm cool with E3 being gone. Fuck off with these cinematic trailers, man. Fuck them. I don't ever <laughs> want to see a cinematic trailer ever again, unless it's some fucking blizzard shit, because we all know their games are probably going to look like, I, I mean, anyway, it's unless like, it's yeah. like Overwatch. I do kind of <laughs> feel like as far as public perception goes that I think demos that are built over the course of a couple of months just for e3 is more harmful yeah because that happened it with <sighs> god that <laughs> happened with that one game man like that happened with that one game they spent months yeah. building that demo oh what's, and... what's on the shirt that, that one yeah. on the shirt yeah <laughs> you know and it's like they spent months building that shit and obviously, because it's technically a different build, it's kind of what they want in the game. But obviously, yeah. not everything is going to make it into the final product. So, yeah, it, you know, and then when people find out, they make a big deal out of it. So, I don't know. Maybe I feel like just don't show nothing at this point. Like, if you're going to show announce what something, you're actually making, show. That's yeah, it. like show what you're actually making. Yes. Don't, yeah, don't build a separate build for months taking time out of development just to show off a demo to generate hype that just don't do that Please. and that's what i'm saying that's what e3 did because it was like this yeah. is a big event this is where all eyes are looking so we got to have something for it but it's yeah. like we get rid of it and it's like you just do it on your own schedule now whenever you feel comfortable with what you got i mean fucking the new witcher game they just told us hey we got one in development they didn't wait for e3 to talk about it and then feel like they had to have something to show for it. It's like, Hey, we're working on this. You'll see it when you see it. And like, yeah. that's it, which is great, which I'm, I'm all for. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think, I think that covers it. I think we, we got to, I got have... to a lot of anything. Oh, unless you, yeah. Unless y'all got something, what yeah. you got? I have one question that I want to ask as a closing topic, because it was asked on a server that I was in today, and I thought that was a really good question, and I kind of wanted you guys input on this, and it's a Monster Hunter question. Okay. Um, the person was asking, 
from all the disdain that we've been feeling around Rise overall ever since it came out, is it something that makes you guys worried for the future of the franchise? No. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not worried. No. Um, but I think both Mike and I are not worried. At... This is going to sound super stupid as like veteran hunters. And that's not <laughs> veteran as in we're good at the game. But yeah. as in, we understand Capcom's Monster Hunter development and that Rise yeah. is a one-off game, right? Like, this isn't... Rise isn't World 2, as what everybody says, right? This is, like... Yeah. It's still 5th gen. This is a side game where they try out crazy shit uh, every time. Like, the Rise is the same as GU, as the same as, uh, well, Gen... And then I think like Portable Third also was like a side game. Definitely Portable Third. Yeah. Yeah. So like where they try out all this different shit and see what works, see what doesn't, and then like the big title, they get back to business and it's gonna work. If you so like, if you think of it like let's say Street Fighter, right? You have the mainline Street Fighter numbered games, and then you have like Street Fighter Alpha. You know, like yeah. it's it's kind of like. It, it kind of correlates because and and yeah, and games like thing. Rise they do more crazy shit, while yeah. in the big dick mainline title it's <laughs> a little bit more grounded, you know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's kind of the arguments that I ended up responding to. I was kind of like, I don't feel like things like Palamutes and Wire Bugs are gonna come back to any other games of Monster Hunter in the future. Like for me, those are features that are gonna be really just Rise related. Yeah, like Wire Bug and for sure. I could Wire see Bug Palamutes for sure. coming. I could see Palamutes coming back. Uh, yeah, because they kind of tease that in in Iceborne with the Raider ride. So I could see yeah. that happening. Uh, mm. I could see it not like either Wire way. Bug for sure. Wire Bug, I don't yeah, think that's, that's not coming back. Because I mean, every, least, not every generation, yeah, every yeah. generation has their thing. Like even in the main series, right? Like Clutch Claw is gone. We're not getting that ever again. Uh, <laughs> no. Swimming, not unless it's is reworked. Gone. Yeah, like swimming yeah. from third gen, gone. Like we're not getting that again. I guess the only thing that was like a main mechanic that really stuck around is like fourth gen with aerial stuff. But that's such well, a yeah. wide mechanic that was like that, needed like, to for progression. Yeah, like of the um, series. Yeah. Yeah, that's like, you know, that's kind of like world being able to fucking roll backwards. Like the game was just going to feel like shit if we never got the ability to just fucking roll backwards <laughs> at any point. Um, but yeah, like Rise is it's a one off game. I mean, it's a big game. Obviously, it's Monster Hunter, but that's not what the next game is going to feel like. Like I oh, have nah. no doubt Thank in God. my mind that <laughs> yeah, six, they, because whatever they, six is, is going to it's not going to feel like Rise. Yeah, no, they, 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 they're, um, Capcom is very predictable with, uh, how they, their business models. Yeah. Sometimes they change it up a little bit, but for the most part it's pretty predictable. So they've had like the same Street... business model from Monster Hunter one until world. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like... Yeah. And even then it's almost the same. It's just has a different naming convention now. Yeah. So if anything, it makes newer games feel a bit more unique because of the naming convention but it's still the same shit yeah so, at the core it's the same stuff yeah so world big dick console game now then you got rise is the this is the game we know is gonna sell like hotcakes in japan we need to have it on portable consoles and then monster Hunter 6 the next big dick console game yeah then they're PS5. probably gonna do the same thing again yeah you know so yeah whatever the next switch is that's probably yeah. going to be fucking six or eyes, whatever the hell that game's going to be. Because obviously, whatever the hell Nintendo pushes out, unless they fumble it massively, which I don't know how they could ever do that at this point. And not make a portable Switch. console? Yeah. yeah, unless they fumble it massively, it's going to do what it did, it, the same or better, and Japan's going to go crazy, and they're going to have to get a handheld version of Monster Hunter. So we're going to get six, PS5, Series, <laughs> PC... Get the expansion, whatever that is, and yeah. then two, three years, and then that's perfect time. They're honestly, they could probably already be tech demoing whatever the the next Nintendo console is. I'm I have a feeling developers probably already are working on whatever the next Nintendo thing is and know what it is at this point. Because it's like there's no way they aren't. Obviously, the games have to come at the same time as the console do at this point. So I'm sure 
they probably already fucking tech demoing some crazy shit that we haven't even thought of. I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not worried uh, at all. Like Sunbreak, it's going to be the same as Rise, right? Like hell it like it is, it's going to be more of Rise. So if Rise wasn't your vibe, Sunbreak's probably not going to be your vibe either. It's not fixing that. But I'm not worried for whatever I mean, is going to be after I Rise think or Sunbreak. Sunbreak might have a, a plausible end game though. Loop. It might. I mean, there's a 50% <laughs> chance. 50% yeah. chance. Yeah, I'm not holding my breath for a loop. Like, the standard I'm is just too high, I'm buying three months man. of content, man. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. Like, at this point, I've just accepted that I'm buying three months of content. And listen, that, listen, listen, listen to me. You gotta mm -hmm. have a little faith. All right? So, Dude. no, 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 we're not getting, are low as no, stop so that. No, it's not happening. No, bro, you it's got, not the happening. whole map is a guiding lens. No, I'm talking about the loop of guiding lens. If that the loop whole was map, perfect. If the map is a guiding lens, then the loop is coming back. I don't believe it. I don't believe Listen, it because they already no, gave I, us layered. That's the thing. All right. That uh, that at no. the that at the start was like we were all so excited. Oh shit, we got layered off day one. But there was a little thing in the back of my head where it's like. Yo, nobody's going to care to work for this anymore because we could just get it. That was the drive of so many people in but base listen, world. Nice what point. you you what you're not considering is that that can change. What if people will just be pissed then? People will just be pissed and not want to do it. Yeah, no. They can't they'll change be like, that now. They'll be like, "Why why am I why can't I just make it now?" They gave us they all the layers way because it was changing Iceborne though. Wait a minute. No. no, we didn't have any layered nice in world. That's no. why it was no, amazing. We didn't have layered. It's just we didn't have no. everything layered. We only had special that's, layered. That's my point. Yeah. So we but didn't have. A, it. It's almost the same thing. No, so, not no, at all. I can and layer it. No, 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 no. You're not listening. Mike, you're not listening. Mike, yes. You gotta open your oh, open your ears. Mike, world Listen. had like eight layered sets aside from events. Listen, if I was a game Until designer, and I said I'm gonna change up the end game, right? So now the way you get the layered armor is gonna be changed too. No. Yeah, but nobody's gonna be excited about that. Right. They're just you, gonna feel you, like you, they you lost something. Say that now and then watch. When I'm right, I'm gonna be right. Watch. I mean, we're gonna come back to this pod. It, yeah. They're gonna you, change and you it. You see that smirk and, on Laura's face? It's gonna change. Watch. They're gonna, gonna change, change it and people are gonna be like, this is Lucido stupid. Bitch. I'm just gonna mod it. <laughs> That's all that's gonna happen. People are I like, mean, this is dumb. I could just get vouchers before. Why do I gotta do all this? Why do I gotta wait until I yeah, finish no, you Sunbreak can't that now. before I can get layered? You could get layered right. right basically out the gate in base rise. So now all you right. gotta wait until you get all the way at the end to get layered now? Nah, I'm cool. Nah. I'll just fucking all right, all right. mod it. All right, if they did it from the jump, if they had some kind of end game loop system to make you get layered from base or nothing. All right, cool. But to give it and then take it away, it's like anything, right? You're cool when you don't have it. And then somebody gives it to you and you're like, oh, shit. And then they take it away and you're like, well, you didn't have it before. It's like, well, that doesn't matter. I have it now. I mean, so that you take sounds it away, like it hurts. the Pokemon franchise. Well, yeah, that's I mean, we all have our opinions about Pokemon. So <laughs> that's why. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 They gave us Legends Arceus and then just fucking went right back to the same bullshit with Scarlet and Violet. So, yeah. Dude, who wants that? <laughs> I mean, I, I do hope that some of the, a lot more of the gameplay aspects from Arceus transfers to the new games. Aside from uh, the obvious two version bullshit. But, <laughs> I don't know. I yeah. Did. yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried about, to answer the question, I'm not worried about future Monster Hunter. And I know what it is for Sunbreak. It's just going to be more of Rise. I don't, I don't, I hope I'm wrong. You know, yeah. if you're, if you, it's sometimes, realistic though. Yeah. Like I see it half empty. I might get topped off. So cool. <laughs> As opposed to full but and now not, I'm empty. Uh, so, you know, maybe, but I'm not, I know what it is and I'm excited for it. I'm going to play it, you know, see new fucking silk binds and, more reasons to use a fucking wire bug. That's what I'm saying, right? Like, that's not going to change. Like, let's be honest. They're putting more wire bug shit in, all right? It's going to be more of the same. <laughs> you talked about it in your own video, Mike. 
Here's a stronger wire bug. Here's a more materials wire bug. Use wire bug more. It's going to be more of the same shit. <laughs> so that's not going to change, but that's fine. I know what I'm getting. MH6, though, we better get back to the business. Back to business on six, whatever that's going to be. I hope we get like world combat. Just, just back to just awesome, sick combat, and it just looks great and feels smooth. Yep. Oh man, that's yep. what I want to get back to. Yep. But I don't know. We'll see. Because world didn't have any gimmicks. Twenty twenty four. <laughs> it's crazy. World base world didn't have any gimmicks. The closest you could probably say is like Scout Flies. Was it's it the like, first game that didn't? No. Um, not the first, but probably the first in a while. First since like that's because they were used to probably, gym. Yeah, probably Freedom Unite. Probably the first that didn't have any gimmicks. Like, Try. I mean, I guess Portable 3rd, but that didn't release here. But Try had swimming. Portable 3rd had, had a gimmick? No, I said Portable 3rd oh, didn't, didn't. But that yeah. didn't release here. So oh. that doesn't technically count. But yeah, yeah I mean, Try um, had swimming. 3U. Yeah. 4 had the aerial and mounting. Jen had the arts and styles. And then we got World. And it was just, here's combat. And it just looks awesome now. Boots and on the ground, got, Moss Hunter. Yeah, much. and then we got Clutch Claw and Iceborne and Wounded. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I have, I have faith. I have faith in, in them to do some awesome shit. Um, but yeah, uh, that was a good one. That was that was a really good question. Un, unplanned, but a really good one. Um, so yeah, at the end of the pod, we usually take some questions. And uh, we had one from last week well two weeks ago but for those that saw last week's episode that was an episode <laughs> yep. so we, we didn't even get to it um but I, we'll, we'll get to it now it's from zambino he said pod is back bless up yes we're back happy to be back and the question was if you could have any animal as a pet which uh, it's kind of triggering reading that word uh, logistics and logic be damned. What would you pick? Uh, I'll go last. Logistic and what be damned? Logic. So, like, whether it makes sense, like, you don't have to worry about, like, oh, this thing's going to eat me. Like, that kind of <laughs> Bro, stuff. Bro, <laughs> I would have a Norca or a killer whale, whatever the fuck you call them. That's what I would have. A I just always found whale? them so... F yeah, I find them so fucking fascinated and... SeaWorld fucking sucks. Fuck them. But I yeah. did went there when I was very young with my parents. And I don't know. They always really impressed me. And mm. they're at the top of the food chain. They're, what do you call them? Apex predators. So they yeah. have nobody that comes after them. So I don't know. They're cool. Killer whales. Yeah. And I mean, that's a badass name. I feel like that should be a band Fuck name yeah. if it isn't. Killer whales. That's a sick yeah. band name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, it is. <laughs> What about you, Mike? You Mike look like you're in deep thought. <laughs> yeah, he's pondering on it. Pondering. <laughs> uh, well, mine is not that far fetched. I'm, honestly, I want a Finnick Fox as a pet. Mm -hmm. like, oh, they're so cute. They are dude. so adorable and so fucking loud and hyperactive. Yeah, no, nah, that is. Yeah. <sighs> Just you saying that stresses me out. <laughs> they, Both they're of those so words. <laughs> I mean, I, I wanted to say hedgehog, e even like they're more grounded, though, even though they're not yeah. legal here in New York, I don't think they're not legal in New York either. I know because they're not in PA and that's some bullshit. What's a hedgehog going to do? I don't know why I don't. They're pretty domestic. Like, yeah. wild. I don't know. I'm going to get but, one. But fuck it. Yo, shit. <laughs> I'm about to give me a hedgehog and name that motherfucker Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll have that. to name on Shadow then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, yeah. all right. No, and then I can come I over and bring Sonic Silver, and I have the lame one. <laughs> oh shit, we got the three, the three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The three oh my god, yeah, that's the three right there. All right, <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I would say probably Finnick Foxes. If I mean, if I could think of something more outrageous, then maybe. Shit, I can't think of nothing. Like, 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it's good. Mine's mine's super grounded. So we kind of we kind of went on a scale. <laughs> That's why All I was right. the last one. All uh, right. For me, it would just be a just I mean, I guess fantastically, probably yeah. a wolf, but like oh, he might eat yeah. me. So yeah, you might fuck around I, and not wake up the next morning. Yeah. Like um, so in reality, an older husky. Older. He's tired. He's chilling. He's just that's it. He don't feel like moving much. That's it. Just the older. Just the I'm a husky Yo. version of me. That's what I need. Damn. Just the old man husky. Just chilling. Cause I see videos of huskies and when they're the older ones, they're just like sitting. They just be talking. They're not doing yeah. anything. They just Young sitting. Young Huskies talking. are really like they got a lot. stupid. They have a lot <laughs> of energy, but they're also yeah, really they derpy. Lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want an older They're husky. loud and obnoxious as fuck. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. I need a I need an older boy who's just he's like, bro, I'm tired. And I'm like, bro, me I'm too. Old and me bitter. too. I'm tired <laughs> too. Fuck. Me too, man. Uh, me shit. too. Yeah. So that's what it would be for me. Either a wolf, if you won't eat me. Or an older husky, just just chilling. Um, but yeah, something that unproblematic. Would, yes, <laughs> that's why I said older. Yeah. But I mean, that's if he was younger, it's like he'll grow out of it. But I don't even want that. That's the thing. Like no. even when I was younger, I always knew I probably didn't want kids. Because even when I did want kids, it's probably a toxic trait. It's good why I don't want one. But it was like if I have a kid, I don't even want to deal with them until they can speak back to me. And it's like that's not a good parent. That's. <laughs> Yeah, that's Holy a shitty shit. parent. <laughs> no. But like, I've always said that, and that's why I got to him. I was like, all right, yeah, I probably don't want kids. But it's like, look, if I can't talk to you and tell you to shut the fuck up, and you don't understand what I'm saying, I'm cool, bro. Get back to me when you can like understand what I'm telling you. And I've always sadly felt that way. kids are not born at 18 years old out of the mom's yeah. vagina. So yeah, um, <laughs> like, which is a sign that hey, probably kids aren't for me, which they're not. I'm yeah, aware, no. very much aware. <laughs> Uh, the cat confirmed yeah. it. <laughs> oh my god! Double, triple down, quadruple down, like daily double. Jeopardy confirmed. Yeah, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that'll that'll wrap it up. The fun pod. Thank you all again for for listening, joining. Thank you all for being here, both Mike and Laura. I appreciate it always. And uh, we'll be back again next week. Hopefully, uh, some stuff happens. We kind of. Kind of pulled some pulled some news out of nowhere. We had stuff to talk about, but uh, it was pretty slow. So hopefully we got some more stuff happening um, next week. And we will see y'all next time. Make sure you do the whole thing. You know, like, comment, subscribe, all that cool stuff. Y'all been going crazy in the comments. Appreciate it. Uh, it's been awesome. So I hope y'all keep enjoying it. We'll keep, keep giving it. And we will see y'all next time. Have a good one, y'all. Bye. Peace. Peace.